Okay, L1s, do you want your grooming routine to be a one and done deal? Well, the days of using the trimmer for your face and your private parts are over. Thanks to Manscaped, uh, they've come up with the ultimate package to keep your hairs trimmed from 12 to 6. Introducing Mace, we have the Beard and Balls bundle featuring the Lawn Mower 5.0. Look at that, Mace. Give me a little bit of a trim. Maybe, yeah, I've already used them too on down below, so yeah. <laughs> Just in just oh, in great. case, just in case you didn't know, <laughs> but right up top, how clean's that, mate? Looking very, very sharp. Um, for anyone that wants to pur purchase this entire package and look after not only upstairs but downstairs as well, you can get twenty percent off with free shipping uh, with the code LevelsPod at Manscape. Dot com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code LevelsPod at Manscaped.com. This is the Levels Network. I am Justin Hornell, joined by the Triple OG. What's happening? Terry Torres. Yeah, that's right. What's happening? <laughs> Not much, man. Not much. <laughs> uh, so for people that have noticed it, and only a few have noticed yeah. it, You've been carrying a little bit of ink on your neck. Man, I think because you've hands. got a few, yeah, you've got a couple of tattoos. People sort of haven't been as familiar with it, but a couple of the sharp eyes are really picking yeah. it up. And I, I'll call you Terry Torres because you are going to be Terry Torres in a series. Yeah, um, this is way out of <laughs> way out of left field, guys. Obviously, I, I've told you guys ages ago, and we weren't allowed to say anything. So the last sort of six to eight weeks, I've been filming this show called Sunny Nights which show, uh, stars Will Forte and a couple of really big American actors. Stan, it's going to be straight on Stan Originals. Oh, wow. Huge. It's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite big. I, I sort of tried to play it down, but, um, yeah, it, it's been crazy. It's uh, been a bit of a whirlwind. I've been busy as hell. Uh, it's just it's, – it's a whole other world. Like, mm. this is a whole new – this is a whole series. So I'll tell you how it come about. Um, I was on my way to Brisbane about, like, probably two or three months ago, and a friend of a friend – uh, just come in and goes, oh, would Willie be interested in this acting role? Like, obviously, you know me. I don't act. I've never acted. I didn't aspire to act or anything like that. Yeah. Guy's name is Trent O'Donnell. He's the director of Brooklyn 911 and all these massive American things. And I'm talking to him going, yeah, what's going on, man? It's fucking Willie. Yeah, let's catch up for coffee. Let's see what's going, see what's going to happen. Yeah. Thinking nothing. It could be like me playing me just sitting in a corner like well, fucking just no, you know, like just – no role. As in just like sit in the back, maybe have yeah. a presence, but then no, no A presence, lines. but no lines, no yeah. nothing. Yeah. So I'll meet with him and he goes, I said, look, I'm not going to audition. I don't want to do it. I don't want to really act, right? He goes, no, I want you, you've got the part. There's no audition. And then That's, it sort of got real. That would be, that would be more nerve wracking, the audition, I think, than actually yeah, acting for me. Yeah, And I said, so what's the role? So I'll play an ex-footballer. I'll play an ex-footballer. Uh, Tick, you got that. Coming. Yeah, ex-footballer, yep. big guy, everything tick. like Tick. So it's yeah. So when he put in that analogy, he goes, I can't find a, a player, an actor that looks like you, built like you, has your sort of presence, all oh, that, that kind of sense. stuff. Sort of made sense then. And I was like, I read the script. So there's eight scripts, there's eight episodes. I'm in every single episode, right? <laughs> I've got a lot of lines. I'm doing stuff with. Uh, if anyone knows that, like Will Forte, like yep. I'm, I'm hanging with him every McGruber. single day. McGruber, <laughs> aka McGruber, the funniest fucking dude alive. <laughs> so super nice. So I'm on set nearly, you know, four or five times a week. You know that, yeah. Very long days, um, and, and it's just a whole another world, man. So, I've got to give you credit as well. So, if people don't know that don't know. We've been doing this with uh, with levels and been working around you to make sure that you're yeah. able to do this. So and I've been working with been them. Working and say, look, ass, there's only yeah. two things that I need to do. I'm like seven thirty on Monday and Thursday. I need to be sort of clear for that. So they've worked around that. Yeah. I train in the morning. I come here, and then I'll probably go here, and then I'll go out to wherever the set is. Yeah. And I won't be getting home till like ten o'clock. Man, that's awesome. You know, so it's like, and then I've got to mix in with like the, the Bulldogs training. I've told Gus that I'm doing that. And I've yep. told Aaron Warburton. They're happy as hell. Yeah. Everyone's so proud because it's fucking going to be the biggest pivot of all time. From this <laughs> into acting and it's fucking crazy, right? And I'm yeah. just sitting there and it's just a whole nother world. I mean, just hanging with these great actors and, you know, it's not like I've, I've got two or three lines. I'm in nearly every uh, episode. So and it's crazy, mate. It's a crazy thing. It's, uh, it's this could be like life changing. Yeah, you know, yeah. I do take it seriously. I don't disrespect the art of acting. I yeah. went in there and I told Trent. I said, "Look, I trust you, bro. Yeah. Like you want me to be in there. I could be easily happily doing my own thing in, in my own world, like we've been doing." Yeah. And he goes, "No, I want you. I want you to play. I think you can. You could do it." And, and like, you got some coaching for a couple of months. I got a coaching too. from Rachel yeah. House. Anyone knows who actually she's one of the best uh, Maldi women as well. Like yeah. uh, one of the best actors and coaching actors. Like coaches you know, in yeah. the world right yeah. so i had her for about two or three weeks and then we just started shooting it happened real quick so 
It'll probably it's called Sunny Nights. It's going to be one of the. It's going to be good. That's awesome. It's man. so fun. It's We're, so fun. It's so a comedy. Popular. It's a comedy action. Yeah. Comedy sort of thriller. It's it's pretty good. Well, I'm, play I'm, a debt collector. I'm a debt collector. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of things. Ex footballer. Yeah. Bit of a drug problem. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, is this a true story? <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of things there. Like you know, like I can easily fold into that sort of world. You know, I'm yeah. big presence, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, Mate, yeah, it's so fun. It is so fun. And I've been telling you, I always feel you and Luke in, and I've only told some really close mates, and you know, you. have Probably figure out who your real mates are when you tell people like that. Yeah. Like, they're like, fuck, I'm so proud of you, bro. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you see someone that goes, oh, what are you doing that for? Yeah. yeah, fuck off, mate. Yeah. So if yeah. you're saying that right now, if you're saying that to me, get off our show. Leave. Fuck off. You don't. You don't support us. No. You know, but even friends that you sort of know, right? Yeah. Friends that you, you you think you know for twenty years, and I tell like guys like all my close mates, like, fuck, that's so good, mate. I'm so proud of you. And then someone goes, what are you doing that for? I'm like, oh, you can fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm doing it because I can. Well, here we go. What about in the L1 community? Give Mason congratulations. Get in the comments. Let Mason know how you feel about uh, him taking on. This is huge, mate. It's huge, mate. It's like oh, way out of my comfort zone. You know that. I, I, I grew up, I, I loved Saturday Night Saturday Night Live as a kid. So I watched Will Forte. Even Will Forte is hilarious, movies. mate. And he was I, a big ca- character on uh, Saturday Night Live during And uh, one of the things I was really apprehensive about was like, if someone come into our world, the rugby league world, who's never played rugby league and goes, yeah, I want to be a front row. Mm. Just because you played an acting role, right? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, and it's totally not like that. Yeah, everyone is so supportive. The whole cast, from like just That's like so the good. directors, the producers, and like all the head actors and that. And I'm just like, wow, totally wrong. I had a whole perception, right? It's just like perception of rugby league players. Everyone thinks True. you're just a fucking idiot, right? True. We no, say we're that not. About people we're not. You, right? you know exactly. Yeah, so surprised. you meet these guys. They're some of the biggest stars in that in that in their world. The most helpful people, the most kindest people. Like it's just like. Yeah, really, really, has been blowing me away every single day. They're, they've awesome. been great. Honestly, I, can't, I cannot walk to, yeah, it's gonna be, to it's work. Gonna it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. Gonna be fun. Wait, wait, it's a bit of a comedy as well. So yeah. it's like they get my sort of dry sort of sarcasm. Nice. And, yeah. And I thank Levels as well. I thank you. I thank Lukey because uh, it's they've obviously how Levels is going, right? Yeah. They've, they've saw, how, they've seen how we react, how we and uh, react together and yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so, so that's, uh, that's where they saw it. So I thank you two boys and our platform, right? So it's great. No, you so got I really rep- appreciate it. You're going to represent us well, brother. Yeah. That's for sure. And we're looking forward to it. Lukey, you want to? You've made it to IMDB. Yeah. Leah, Lukey's on IMDB. <laughs> what is that one? I- IMDB. No, IMDB. No, IMDB. Oh, yeah, has he? Oh, wait, wait, he's got yeah, a profile already. Yeah, and there's like- there's, IMDB, Luke, you reckon? And there's people, there's like, um, oh, what are they, eight? Oh, look at that, Luke. <laughs> no, no but there's coming. like, there's agents and stuff like that. Yes. That's but there's cool. but there's agents and people like messaging me now going, oh, yeah, you're doing this. I'm like, I don't need an agent. I went in there with no agent. How good's that? I, cause, because I trust Trent. And you know where Trent's from? Yeah. Ellie Barner. Where's that? Newcastle, across the road, from, across the road from Toronto. Toronto West, baby. Yeah. What's up? Uh, yeah, so that's where we had that connection. And he, he's obviously been following my career and he's been doing some big things over in America. He's highly respected in what he does. He's he's done a lot of those, a lot of those movies. So yeah. it's been so good, man. So cool. Can't wait for the rap party. <laughs> yeah, well, we're in. Hopefully we – whatever the – Hey, uh, Levels is coming, mate. Yeah. Don't worry about that. We've we got to get there. We're going. The camera. We are going. Yeah, Gold bro. Logie coming. Best supporting actor. Oh, <laughs> New up-and-coming actor. Oh, imagine Come on. Get... We're going with Logies, baby. Yeah, we're going with Logies. No fucking Golden Globes, bro. Don't remember that. Because it's going to be it's going to be, it's gonna be in America because we've got two American um, leads. Yep. It's going to be in England. everywhere. It's, it's worldwide. Far out. That's awesome. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. What's worldwide. Up? On, pip- um, on people. Speaking of just <laughs> things that are just popping for us at the moment, we've been really excited. We want to get through the origin period first, uh, and then I am happy to announce that we have officially got the Levels Golf Day, golf day times, yeah. uh, and I've I've done this with Imagine Golf, who specialise. So you would have maybe seen me done a good job, posted mate. on social media. Um, done a last couple of months. I've been going around getting uh, two players from every team involved in this golf day. So I've got that all locked in now. Um, so I've teamed up with Imagine Golf. The golf day is going to be the Thursday, October third of the Grand Final week, and we're really excited. Got uh, um, a, a couple of, uh, of of our partners, the Tab, are going to be a co-major yeah. sponsor with Knuckles and the team at Country Trucker Caps. Uh, we're pumped to have Knuckles on board. Love you, Knuckles. Love you, Knuckles. Um, so they're on board as the co-major sponsor for the day, and then a number of other sponsors and and business and companies that you'll be uh, aware of. Now we've got to the point we're going to start opening it up. We've got our sponsorship sorted, our sponsorship holes sorted, but there will also be tickets uh, to just play on the day in a group. So if you uh, want to be a part of the day? Yeah, a couple of questions and, here. Yep, go on. 
If you uh, want to potentially sponsor a hole, is yep. that still available? There are a couple left. Yeah, there are only a couple left. Uh, there will be opportunities. If Isla we, Vodka can Isla Vodka. Isla, we can Isla? we can accommodate Isla for sure, yeah, mate. Pretty sure we can. Uh, so we're going. I've got a golf day today with them. I'm going straight out to the lakes after this. That's okay. why I've been in the kit the last couple of weeks. We love that. Kit. Um, we're locking in the last couple of sponsors, um, but there will be a couple left. Okay. So if you have any inquiries, you can either reach out to me on Instagram, um, Lukey. I'll get you to put my. Uh, uh, Levels Network email in the bio for this episode as well, uh, and you can, and then obviously Lukey, you can reach out to Lukey, and uh, we'll give you more information if you require. We're really Good excited day, about man. it. Um, the boys are really excited about it. They've got to focus obviously on the footy first and foremost, but when the time's right. This is um, good, man. This is the inaugural one, right? It's the, the first, first ever, and we're just going to build and build and build, man. Yeah, we're going to build it up, and um, we've got some heavy hitters. I, I will uh, announce our ambassadors. So the ambassadors that we've got on board, uh, without naming all the rest of the boys, we have the one and only Troll Mitt. Yeah, Trill Mitt. Latrell Mitchell. We have the one and only Money Man, Cash Money, Cam Munster, Nathan Cleary, Daly Ooh. Cherry Evans, Adam Reynolds, and Caelan Ponger from the Newcastle Shit. Knights. So we've got some heavy hitters. We've got well. some heavy hitters, yeah. I've, we we mainly like concentrating on rugby league, right? It's rugby league. So, so next year, we might reach out to Mick Fanning, Joel Parkinson, all those do- all those guys, well, maybe. Because Mick was gracious enough to invite me to his, yes. I did reach it's out. It's only Mick. right. I, I did reach out to Mick. Unfortunately, he can't make it. He's in California while we're uh, while we're filming. He's got a surf event over there. Ooh. But I did reach out to Mick. That is the plan, Mace. Yeah, to I'm grow thinking it that, out. Thinking that this year will be rugby league. Next year, I want to focus on. Um, Get in more sports. I know AFL love everybody, their golf. We've got Sydney Swans players everybody. that play at the coast. Uh, rugby everybody. union players. Everyone loves it. Um, you, you've only got to look to what Mick's done, and he's done a great job. And that's what we need. Uh, to get and to. having multiple sports athletes and and, and just like celebrities, athletes, everything. Everyone loves golf. But for the focus of this one, every rugby league player thinks they're the Mickey at golf. We'll find out. We'll who, find who, out. Who's, who, who are you backing? Don't I, put yourself so, in there. Well, I didn't want to throw too many names out there that weren't ambassadors, but I will say my favourites for the day. Uh, one of them, they're not the ambassadors. The Canberra Raiders players, Jordan Rapina and Josh Papali'i from the Canberra Raiders. Big Papa hits them. Canberra. They're both single digits golfers. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to be very hard. Well, there's nothing else to do in Canberra but play golf. <laughs> you play golf and you play footy. <laughs> That's it. You dominate on the field, boys, and you dominate on the golf course. Yeah, or, or you, might, you might switch well, on. Is, is the great Clint Newton thing. coming? Yes, we'll RLPA are involved. He's good. Yeah, RLPA are involved. So we'll be we'll, we'll have a so there are some relationships that we've got with Hello Sports boys that always look after us when they have them. So they'll be there. What's this guy's job? Uh, you're on the drinks Just cart. Yeah, good. and you've got the. I'll play, I'll play a couple. I'll play a couple. Yeah, you you might do a celebrity every. Yeah, now and again. boom, come in, cruise around, drinks cart. Um, Renny, the great Rennie Matua Rennie said Matua. he wants to be on the drinks well, he'll cart. Be with, well he'll with be you. with me. So he'll be your partner. Lukey will be following you with. There's with, no better drinks cart drivers than Matua and Mason. Matua, mic'd up. Ooh. With Lukey following you in a, with the drinks cart at the back. So you'll be mixing and mingling Stacked with, with Isle of Vodka. And then, we'll, and then we'll turn it into a huge, big vlog. And uh, I'm in the process of uh, chatting to SEN, getting them involved as well. Great. They might do an OB and be commentating sort of in the background or doing do on the radio. What about Braith and Aston? BA, yes. He, you know what BA? Braith, He'll very, fucking win. Yeah, Braith would win it if he played in it. Uh, Braith, Braith needs uh, all the way up until with Fox commitments, which is obvious, right? Yeah, but so, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's yeah, a good I, day. I think we can twist his arm. We'll twist his arm. I, th- I think we've got to get okay. to the point like a couple of weeks out and then we'll declare. It's not like he's got to stay fit for the game. For the game. <laughs> yeah, ain't playing, mate. Come on, Bob. No, I was playing with uh, Brian. The great and powerful Brian Fletcher is involved in Biff? the day, though. Biffle? The Biff will be involved in the day, yeah. Um, but you got some big dogs, yeah. eh? So Fletcher's involved. Um, and, and we're talking about playing with him, playing with Braith a couple of weeks Fletch, ago, who Fletch. drove, if you are aware of the Coast um, Golf Club, he drew, pretty much drove the fifth hole the other day. So Braith is just an absolute animal. I'll tell you that story when he, he hit uh, Rennie, Rennie in the head 200 metres out. Yeah, you did, yeah. It's fucking one of the greatest <laughs> stories of all time. So <laughs> Ren, Ren and I, me, Ren, Jamal Alessi, Tong, I think JT, we were all sitting around just fucking hungover as hell. We had a golf day. And then uh, so Rennie's face, so you're Rennie, yep. right? And we're all, he's flipping a golf club around like that going, yeah, we're talking shit what we did last night. Next minute, he just starts bleeding down his forehead. And we're sitting going, did you hit yourself in the head with a golf club, you fuckwit? Just sort of laughing like that. Yeah. And he's just like, fuck. And then you see Braith running over going, four. And he's fucking hit him in the head from 200 away. And Ren just didn't even know. He just well, went. That's delayed concussion or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rattled him. Yeah. And then what rattled him more was 
I swapped so I swapped his number with like uh, his missus, his ex missus's number. So I was messaging him because me and Ren got home about eight o'clock in the morning. I was like, "Where the fuck were you last night?" Blah 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 blah. Like did his head in, you know? Did his head in the whole day? So I had his phone. I'm talking. I ran this for like a couple of hours. So it rattled him the whole day. Yeah. So I'm sitting there going, "I knew you were out with Mason Bright." So whoever our crew was, I was in the corner. Blah 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 in Sapphire this and that. And he's like, and every time like we'd write a message, everyone was around. You'd see him read it and just see his heart would go. Like, Oh, ran with it for fucking ages until he was just he he wanted to go. He goes, "Okay," I said, "It's me." And he was fucking. It was one, it was one of the best gets of all time because it just went for so long after getting hit in the head. So not only did he get hit in the head with yeah. a golf ball, you hung over as fuck to yeah. double down, double and down him, on it. Get him. With Let's get him while he's fucking. Just lay the slipper in. Love it. I love it, OG. Um, before we get onto the show, because this one's normally. When we do preview, generally, like, this is the point where, like, sometimes we can we can talk footy for days, yeah, right? Fine. So it doesn't matter. But there aren't that many topics. Man, it was a huge week in the NRL. Mm. Um, we've got reports around Bizza. And yeah, man. Potentially being unsettled at Penrith. we got Young Guns, uh, Blaise Salangi and Stefano Uto Ikemanu turning down their current clubs to sign elsewhere. Unbelievable. Uh, it's not confirmed yet, but it has been reported with a couple of those clubs. What I wanted to ask, ask you about. Yeah. Um, Gordy called out Adam Reynolds' captaincy credentials. On was that on for 360, 360 the other night? When I was on the one before, I was on there. You must have been chatting to Jammer me, at the me back. Chambers, me, Chambers, uh, Woodsy, and uh, Jimmy were just talking shit out the back. I have it on mute as well, so you can't fucking understand. Well, I'll, I'll feel I you. just saw Bull, Bulldog's beautiful head. <laughs> What's it like when you see Bulldog? Fucking in Fucking sweet. Yeah, yeah. I don't, everyone knows it's a yeah. fucking, we're just joking, you know what I mean? If, you, if you, They're old enough to know that. They can't yeah. be that sensitive. You've been around. Oh, the- so go in there, shake their hands and snow hard. There's no fucking. What name. are they going to say to you anyway? What do really? I mean? Like, you know, I don't, I don't dislike yeah. Bulldog yeah. Or, or Reedy just or anyone. Their take sometimes, sometimes, yeah, well, exactly right. Yeah. And I just take, you know, we're sitting on here, we've got a bit of a, a platform here where we can joke around where they don't have time to joke around. Yeah. It's fucking ding, 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 yeah, ding every two segments. minutes. Yeah, so yeah, they need to correct. nail that, mate. That'd be good on podcasts. Get them on there because they're actually good blokes. Yeah, yeah. They're actually they decent blokes, yeah, right? They've they got decent blokes, but they're just on 360 and it's very amplified, right? Well, if you understand the narrative for a lot of things yes. sometimes, yeah. Yes, you know, if you, if you know how it goes down before, you know, they've got these little things that they're all – what they need to touch on. Yeah. Braith does such a great job. Um, but, yeah, like, Braith he segues them all into everything and then he just lets Gordy and, you know, them three just fucking have a crack. All right, we'll, we'll have a – we'll have a um, – I'll take anyway on yeah. the Gordy situation because I yeah, think well, it's, was, it's, I, didn't, I didn't give me some. We'll get to it a little bit yeah, later okay, on. Okay, okay, we'll get to it a little bit later on. I um, want to thank uh, our partners, BSC, yes. uh, for providing not only these cans for us here, but providing them for the people and the followers at Levels. At Coles. At Coles you can get them at Coles and they are flying Getting off the a shelf. lot of love on in the DMs about yeah. that. Yeah. But again, look, you know, obviously you know, the – our partners, BSC and Tab, you know, yeah. we're proud to have them on board. But I love when people reach out to us and yeah, our listeners them. let us know that they are indeed yeah. um, uh, buying them because they are top shelf. I tell everyone they taste so good and they're really good for you as well. So <coughs> bless you, mate. All right, let's get into uh, – while we're at the thank yous, let's yeah. continue. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you to everyone who's followed us on Instagram and TikTok. They're all going through the roof. And anyone who has left us a review on Apple and Spotify or on YouTube like this one. And this is a reply from Benny G. Uh, hi, Willie, Justin, and the Levels crew and fans. In response to your question from Nibs about where to go before it was game, I managed the Lily World Bar, which is within the Mount Smart Stadium on Maurice, Maurice Road. Uh, plenty of fans interacting, singing away, and watching the curtain raiser while the music creates a vibe. Lily World is an outdoor bar with a roof and plenty of atmosphere. Get in early to grab a table around 4 to 5 p.m., but we are open from 10 a.m. for your information. Food is available, liquid refreshments, and it is family-friendly. Friendly. If anyone uh, at, comes- At Mount Smart? Is that where we were? This is on Maurice Road. Oh, not in Mount Smart. Okay. Yeah, it must be just around, just up the road. Okay. So it, it's a it's a, a really weird setup, Mount Smart, because it's sort of like an it's industrial- in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's like an industrial yeah. sort of area. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is this sounds like a good shout. Otherwise, um, starting off in the city, if you're not familiar with Auckland and then maybe making your way over to Lily World, I reckon um, that's, if that's, anyone that's comes in there. from any club, uh, even Broncos and Storm fans, ask for me and we will have a, a yarn, look after you the best we can because uh, we always have waves of NRL uh, fans come through. Plenty of dog fans come over here already, so bring it on. Canterbury, banks down, spread the word. See you there. Sincerely, Benny. So sh- thank you, Benny. Uh, and we had a bless you, mate. And we had a number of people that reached out and – 
the Warriors Waz oh, community great. That's great. has been very welcoming and that um I just want to add uh, congratulations, I suppose, and uh, what a an achievement for everyone involved in the Warriors. The media team, shout out to Jacko who reached yeah. out to us on Monday just after we'd finished the show. Sold out Mount Smart Stadium for the entire year. First crazy, first man. rugby league team to do that, mm. uh, and, and I'm sure it would be a long Hopefully time. they do that next year because, you know. Well, this, is, this has been my – I was always like – off the back of what they did last year, like oh the Waz fans, that's cool. Like they're you know getting behind it, but you know a lot of a lot of fans are bandwagon fans, and mm. and in the past this whole Waz movement's different. I yeah. I really think the specific up the Waz uh, catchphrase has honestly just taken over the yeah, country. You sad. think about during the the rugby union World Cup and how popular still New Zealand rugby league was during yeah. that period. I I think this is going to be a real pivotal moment for New Zealand Rugby League over there. The game is as strong as it's ever been it and this is a great indication. So congratulations to everyone from the media team. Obviously the players. Get another team there. Obviously the players, yeah. So there's definitely now, in my opinion, Valendis is talking about 20 teams. Yeah. I think we've either got a South Island or the South of uh, North Wellington. Island. Yeah. I think Wellington makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, not the, not the South Island. Yeah. That's dominated by Union. Yeah. Dominated. In saying that, if they had a South Island team, maybe we do a trip over there. Maybe we go to Queenstown. Maybe Ooh, do a bit of scan. Yeah, 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 maybe we do that. You know, like come on, don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Come on, Valini. Um, but yeah, c- congratulations to everyone involved with the Warriors. What a great job selling out the stadium for the entire year, and you are currently sitting in twelfth or thirteenth at the moment. And that is again. I go back to the fans for sticking with your team through a really tough period and a, yeah. and a tough year where a couple of things have gone against you, uh, like they do for most teams. Um, but you, you've, you've stuck by them. And, and shout out to Benny for providing uh, some information for Nibs. Um, all right. These are the Storm lyrics. In a land they call Victoria, where all the legends dwell, we're the champion rugby league team and we sing it a bit as well. Oh, we're a half a pack of bastards and we show a bit of form. No one can defeat us with a mighty Melbourne storm. Mm. We'll take it to those Panther blokes and we'll really give them hell and we'll have a, a lot more points when they ring the full-time bell. Oh, we're a pack of bastards and we show them a bit of form. No one can defeat us with a Melbourne storm. Up the Panthers. Did he insert the, the Panthers bit in there or yeah, what? he did. As I was reading, I that, like the bastards bit because yeah. it looks like a, a, a team of like that nobody wants, right? Yeah. So they really galvanise around that. I think that's the word, right? So can, can Melbourne Storm fans, if that is indeed the song, so maybe they just changed whatever the uh, name is. So just say one yeah. week it's the Panthers, next week it's the Roosters, the following week it's the Seagulls. Yeah. So maybe they just changed the name of the team. Yeah. Week to week that they beat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know if that is That's indeed not too bad. Storm. That's pretty, it's pretty it's good. Sung. Song. What's a, how, what sort of rhythm is it sung in? Not yeah. Even, don't even, that would be important. Maybe I butchered it by with, <laughs> with my rhythm. You're but right. anyway, um, here's another one. This one is from Larry Fai Taya Lofa. Uh, Love the podcast. Do me one favor. You talk about OGs and only say the nicknames, for example, Foz. It took me four episodes oh. to figure <laughs> oh, it out. Sorry. You're talking about Kieran Foran. <laughs> Guys, I, I get this all the time and I know I'm trying to be better at it, but just remember, just like for instance, if you've got a mate that you grew up with in your entire life and you never – like I've never called Foz Kieran Foran. That's my – like Or never I, Kieran. Or never Kieran, right? So it's something I've got to be better at and it happens all the time. we got to check each other. So if you hear me say it and I'll be the same, whether you say Ogre, then we're yeah, going to make yeah. sure we say Mike and really. Yeah. Because we never call them Mark. You never call Ogre Mark. You never. I'll never call Foz Kieran. Jeez, I played with this real hard dude. His name was Mark. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some listeners that are new to us uh, that might mm. not be familiar with our relationships. Yeah, yeah we try. We try so, to be better. We try and be better, guys. So we do slip up, especially a, a when we're bit. fucking in full tilt, right? Yeah. When we're going through a story and we're like, "Yeah, I'm Foz," and we're not. Like, sorry, Kira Foran. You know, fuck yeah. everything up. Like, imagine if you just grew up with Plugger down yeah. at the down, yeah, at, down at the. But the, his real name. But his real name is Dennis. <laughs> Yeah, fucking what? Yeah. Plug it sounds way better. Yeah. Um, here we go. This one, uh, this is a cool story, and then we'll get on to the stories of the week. This one's from Ryan Gearing. Again, this is the guy that gave us the Western Sydney spiel a couple of weeks ago or, or last week. Killing it as always, lads. Just wanted to tell you boys a quick one. When I was younger, I was growing, through, growing up through the grades in the Penrith comp, as you boys know, super competitive. We had a young kid at the time, was only 18, that come down from the country and wanted to stretch his legs and get some games under his belt. He played C grade and absolutely tore them up. Scoring a hat-trick, 
Then got asked to back up for the Reggies boys, played a full game on the wing, got another try. And once again, our A-grade team was carrying a couple of injuries, so they asked him again, and he said, absolutely, scoring another two tries, and it was safe to say we never saw him again. Any guesses who? No. So Penrith comp? Yeah. Uh, two tries on the wing. Uh, so a try on the wing, then he played A-grade, 18 years old. It is the great and powerful Dylan Edwards. Shit. We never saw him again. So he that was his I think that might have been the one weekend. He played C grade, reserve grade, so A grade. I love, I love the journey on that man. Yeah. People don't understand that. They're just seeing the end result. They're seeing the end result the last three years and then the origin success. But like that's the grind, guys. Kids, stop looking at the end result. These young kids, all they do is look at Instagram and see it's like instant gratification. The fucking amount of hard work these guys do mm. is unbelievable. From so the top-notch Nathan Cleary's all the way to the bottom. So here's my thinking with this, right? So, And it was safe to say we never saw him again and he was straight into Penrith after that. So he's quite unique where I, by the sounds of it, he so wasn't signed by Penrith. He wasn't touted. From, he wasn't recruited highly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what I mean. He went through the journey is crazy playing local league and all that kind of stuff yep. to get through. And then was- Worked on his game so much. That's what I respect him so much about. No, yeah. one, knew, no one knows the journey. Yeah. They just see what's happening now. It's cool, isn't it? It's, it's awesome. Critter's got a similar That's what story. I'm saying. Look at it. Critter was a late bloomer yes, as well. Yes, but, but you look at guys like Dylan Edwards, don't compare- so Caelan Pong is, I always say that. Like KP is like a generational talent. Mm. Reese Walsh, all Teddy, all these guys, man. They're talented, but they work hard. Mm. You know, like mm. Dylan Edwards didn't have the talent of a KP. Not saying he had no talent. Mm. He's been more of a slow burner. He burn, just hasn't he? worked his ass off. Mm. Been consistent. Yes. Consistency has been just the key for him. Grinding. All right. Well, speaking of it, let's get to his uh Penrith Panthers teammate. Yeah. Now it has been reported, and there could be uh, more. This is last night I was filling this out, so bear with me if they've been any updates to this but it has been reported by Mr. Exclusive himself. Ooh, that's only one man, Danny Wider. <laughs> so if you're not aware of nicknames, Mr. Exclusive. We named Danny him Wider. Exclusive back in the 2000s. Um, he's doubled, and he doubled down on it yesterday saying the report caught Penrith by surprise. Right. So the report is Pen uh, Bizzer is a little bit unsettled at the moment. Okay. So I'll throw some things at you. It has been reported that he is on 650k. Um... Do you think that that is business value is my first it's question? It's unders, mate. How it's much? Unders. It's, it's by, by quite about significant. A couple, by a couple of hundred. Yeah. And I think just because he's – people don't understand, he's a try scorer, he's a meter eater, and he saves tries. Mm. You know what I mean? I saw a take from Joel Kane. Sugar, yep. Sugar, him and Joel Fletcher saying, who's more valuable, a front rower or a winger? And I'm like, shush. Well, I understand what he's saying, yeah. but – you don't work as hard as fucking Payne Haas. It was Paddy Carrigan and no, it was Paddy a bad Carrigan, example. That doesn't, it wasn't, but like any middle. Like you're talking, Toto is the best winger in the game. I'm going to go him, Tino, Carrigan, middles like that. Yeah. They're fucking way more valuable. That's why they're on about 1.2. Yes. Top tier, yes. Yeah, top I tier. Agree. I'm just saying, but, but Toto's the top tier as well. So he's max. No, be, so this is this is the example. And I agree with you, right? I'm, yeah, I just don't fucking ever so, put a so winger's Bizza, name in front row. When you compare a guy like – says a lot about Bizza that you're even comparing him, right? Oh, fuck. Only because he's a special He's a correct. special man. Any other wingers? Like no, as no, good as no one. Zach Lomax no has one. gone this year no and one. a number of others. But Bizza comparing him to Paddy Carrigan is a bad example because Paddy Carrigan, Payne Haas, Tina Fasulmo Ali. Fanul Blake. They, 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 do a, they do a lot of work through the middle, but also the efforts that they do defensively, even though I think Bizza is – his defensive abilities is oh, yeah. underrated but as he, a player. But still, it's probably not comparing him to the top – Probably one two percent of middles is unfair. The next fucking ninety eight percent, I'm probably picking Bizzer, Bizzer over some of the uh, outside of you know Pat Carrigan's, um, maybe Cam Murray's. It's a bad comparison. Isaiah, Yo. very bad because uh, I know and a dis I don't want to disrespect wingers, but I'm definitely not disrespecting middle middles because the detail that that entails to be the best middle, yep. the kick chasing, the kick pressure, the marker defense, the mar the line prep, the fucking the. I know the, the, the wingers get a tough carry on play two or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just cop your medicine. Yep. We're copping that 24-7 nonstop, plus on the kick chase, plus getting down there. You set standards. You set the tones for the game. Mm. Wingers don't. Mm. And now you've got to be – And you can, you, can get, you can get toe out of the game. Just kick the other way. 
for a while, kick the other way for a while. He's going to get in there, but he won't be in there till play three because he doesn't get over the other side of the other field when he when you kick the other way. That's a good point, right? So like you can actually take a front, you can take a winger out of the game, and but also, you can't take a front rower out of the game because he's going to get the fucking ball yeah. if he wants. And you know, Tino's going to get the ball, Payne Haas is going to get the ball, both sides of the ruck, and then he's going to deliver what he wants. Either, also, that's the standard that you set. Front rowers, fucking. That's why they're getting paid. Over 1.2 mil if you're the premium. And you're the premium winger, Toto, he might get 700, 750. Maybe. Well, so here's, here's what I reckon needs to happen now. I think there is a level of he took unders and let's talk this out as yes. well. I want to see if you agree with me Go. on this. I, I had a chat with Kempi about this yesterday. So before – he would have re-signed a couple of years ago and this would have been a decent contract for a winger. Now the salary oh, cap's yeah. gone up. But before he'd re-signed, uh, at this point he was still teammates with – all of his groomsmen, his best man, Jerome Luai, Spencer Lenu, and Stephen Crichton. Now they've all either left with Stephen Crichton and Spence or Jerome's moving on next year. So if he was reported to have taken the 650 is correct and he's taken unders to stay with his teammates, well, that's no longer appealing to him to yeah. take unders to be – I know he's, he'd be super close with all the other boys, but – Hey, there is groomsmen for a reason. They've got a different level of friendship that you can't compare yep. to. One hundred percent. So even though he's close with all the rest of his Penrith teammates that would have been at his wedding, but sitting at the tables and not up there with him, I think that's a huge factor in what's happened. And he would be looking at some of the contracts from some other players that have been reported, even some players at his own club. Like you think about um, that before they released him, obviously, Taylor May had been re-signed there and also Isaac Tungor had got done at the start of the year. And if reports are true, that's north of 650. Um, so if you're looking what Bizza has given to this club, I think this is a really unique case where Biz is looking at it going, this is unders and these are the reasons why I potentially signed for unders. And I think Penrith very quickly go, ah, yeah, this is way too un – like we're getting away with something here. And what he brings off the field and on the field and what, Good he, point. Is, what he is as a player, what he brings as social human. media as a human. He's a quintessential fucking great, great human, Polynesian, proud Polynesian brother, represents the people so well from Western Sydney and I'm like, he's like, well, fuck it, what are these guys getting, you know, 650? Mm. Like he plays centre. Like he's going to change the market. He's going to like – he will be, he'll reset the market as a winger. I agree. Because I don't think he's going to be uh, put in that, oh, you're just a winger, mate. Mm. Going to those days, he's not just a winger. He's more than a winger. And he's an he outlier. he needs to be paid accordingly. He needs to and be paid said, like an outlier. His, brother, his, his main brothers are left. The Samoan brothers, that brotherhood, yep. they're left, right? What do you think after Origin? Who's, what's that photo? All four of them. That's yeah. a brotherhood there, man, yeah. that they built together. They won three comps, have been to four. You know what I mean? How much more can you get? Mm. How much more can you get from that guy? And anyone who leaves Penrith at the moment, it should be like that. Thank you. Well done. I don't care if you've signed a contract and you're on contract. Contracts don't mean shit. What if he was in bad what, – let's, let's look up the paradox. What if uh, Toto just fell off a cliff and he's playing so bad and you're like, oh, God, let's, we should wish we could get rid of him. All he's right. on too much money. I'll give you an example. Well, fuck that. No, he's not. I'll give you an example. We're about to get to Val Holmes. He's yeah. currently been shopped around because he's on close to a million for the Cowboys. Yeah, there so you go. There you go. Cowboys, and, and this is not a shot at the this Cowboys. This is a business, boys. This is talking business. business. We're talking business. 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 Business, business. All right, and this is business, business. Business, business. I think there's a world in which the Tigers specifically pay $1 million for Bizza, and I think it would be a great signing. I would if I could. Yeah. Maybe not, maybe not a million. He, he's an outlier eight, for me, mate, yeah, and by the way, I, I wouldn't eight, do this for anyone eight, else. 850 I think you get. I think you'd be happy with that. Let me let me try Three to. Year deal. I knew I knew you'd be this because yeah. I knew that's a lot of money. But it let was me, a lot of money. Let me pitch. Let me pitch this to you. It's his twenty sixth birthday next week, he's right? Only he's only twenty five, turning twenty six. He's Jerome's best mate. They're losing Stefano through what's perceived to be a culture problem at the club. When you bring in Jerome Luai, and despite what everyone thinks about Jerome Luai, he's much of a line player. Ask any of his teammates what it's like to, to play with Jerome I mean, Luai and specifically Brian Toto. Look what Stephen Crichton has done to the Bulldogs and that influence that he has. He's done to the Roosters as well. Spence has done a good job. But Sp Roosters, yeah, were, know, Roosters were always strong. That's that's a, a – well, I understand yeah, the example. Yeah, but, but he's, he's been one of their For best. sure, for and sure. fucking missed eight games. Yeah. Let's get that into fucking yeah. – take that into account. That's right. But he was really good in Origin, wasn't he? Uh, and I, I, I can't stress enough the person, Bizza. And, and that goes a long way. Think about this, right? He is one – 
three grand finals in a row, in a row and I and you couldn't find a fan. If you if three Dalian wingers in the world, in, true. Yeah, there. you couldn't find a fan. I don't reckon league wide that does dislikes. He bizarre. does everything right. Yeah, everything right as a human, and that's what we're trying to produce. We produce. They're producing great footballers out there, but they're producing great human beings. Mm. They're the people that you want in your club. I pay overs for people like that. I would pay overs for that, yeah. and I just think over, overs and max the him is eight fifty. Okay. If he can get 850, 900, 950, that's what he's worth. So I think even Penrith should be paying him 850, 900. They won't. They just can't. They just fucking – got, you got the Prince on 1.2, 1.3. I don't know what he's on. Yep. Dylan Edwards will be pushing up a mill. Yep. Um, Yoey. You know, Yoey, all Liam those guys. Martin. So Liam Martin, they're all going to fucking be pushing. You know, he, I think if – if Penrith were fair income, they would not be letting him go. Well, so so here we go, right? But as like, I said, it's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper because I think he's might, might feel a little bit disrespected. Yeah, I think that's fair. Obviously a fair bit. I'm just playing that down. I think, you, I think he's just like, you know what, why the fuck am I he's – got, he's got a family. Yeah. He's got fucking kids to feed. Yep. He's got a legacy to fucking go. He's got to build generational wealth and he's got a great opportunity to do that. Yep. Right? All, most Polynesian brothers out there, man, we're all from nothing. Hmm. We are from nothing. And now you got something. Now you got a chance to build that wealth, build that generational wealth. You know what I mean? Like all this, all the, the cards that we get dealt, fucking shit at the start. Now mm. they've, they've played their cards perfectly. They're in a power position. Now go get that bag. Yeah. And just and you know and as I said, anybody who has been in that dynasty at Penrith, if they decide to leave for more money, they should be fucking. Well done. Thank you for your fucking help. Yeah, so let's- Thank think, you for building this dynasty. Let's let's attack it from Penrith's side. And this is super, like, I'm not critical of Panthers at all in this, right? If you've got a player like Brian Titan and you've got him for 650, then that's a, that's great re- retention, recruitment and retention. And yeah, but the, the you know why he stayed? Because he thought they were staying. Of course, all right. So now that's my yes. next point. I think there's a world in which Penrith realise the reason why business is now on unders. And if, I think it's crucial that they keep Bizza. I think I think they should be going in a heartbeat. If he comes in and goes, look, for all the reasons that we talked, and, and I don't want to put words in Biz's mouth as well. This is just us talking just, it out. Just, we don't know what's going on. But for all those reasons, if Penrith Panthers then had a chat, Matty Cameron, I know I've dealt with Matty Cameron. If they sit down and they go, hey, you know, I want 850 because of this. Like my boys were here. They're not here anymore. I'm looking at players that are signed. I, if I'm Penrith, I go, 850 done. Get it done. Do you find- Do not piss off the most beloved and liked player in the competition. Do you think that is maybe a little bit different, a uh, little bit uh, dirty that they've let go of Luai? They've let go of Critter. Could they yeah. have kept them? Could they have kept Lenu? Um, you know, maybe in a perfect world they could have, but they re-upped the other guys. Yeah. It's, and it's, instead of him, instead of, the, instead of his brothers, and he'd be like, fuck- they, we all built this. You know, he probably took unders to stay with those guys. Yeah. You know, and now they're- It's a good question. They, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it little is. things like that. Like I know he's he's a very happy-go-lucky brother, you know what I mean? Like, but you, we don't know what he's thinking. He's probably going home talking, you know, we don't know what, he, what he's like really. He's yeah. sitting home going, fuck that, man. They said they're going to sign Critter. They said they're going to sign Lenu. They said they're going to sign Luai. They said it was a brotherhood forever. We're going to stay here for 10 years. Mm. And now it's not. So, so they're the fucking things that you got to weigh up, people, if, when, before he makes his decision and, and why he makes his decision to leave. Think about everything. Perspective, right? The one thing that Penrith could have and couldn't have anticipated is the James Fisher Harris yeah. moving on, right? Because therefore they could have either kept Spencer kept. or Critter. Yeah. Um. Before, like, and that was even before sort of Jerome was negotiating, yeah, right? It was and too he, deep. It was too deep. They yeah. Jerome deep. was a bit different. I think Jerome, even though they've said all the right things. I don't think what Ivan said. I think that rubbed Jerome it's, the wrong way. And, and if it rubs Jerome them. the wrong way, it rubs Toto the wrong way. Well, they're best friends. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a, yeah. that's a brotherhood there. And yeah. I think if he leaves, as I said, pat him on the back. It's it's very like. I don't think anyone's really in the wrong because, with regards to Penrith, because they've been so successful. Like you even think back, like not only those guys. Matty Burton, Philly Army Kickow, yeah. Opie Coruscant. Like the team. amount of the amount of talent that they've had to manage and let go of, but still keep this thing rolling and successful. Bizza has been a big part of this. It's Melbourne two point man. Yeah, crazy. So it's a very it's a very unique situation. Bizza is the only player, even though wingers they're a lot more valuable yeah. than they've been in the past. I would go if I'm Tigers. I would go a mil. And I said. Go back, watch the tape. Last year I said pay Jerome 1.2 yeah. for all the things that I've said now, now that have come to fruition. Mm. You've seen you've seen Jerome control the team without Nath. You've seen him be dominant in an origin series without Nathan. So now the runs are on the board for Jerome. And now that deal, which was perceived by most, 
people won't admit when they're wrong, right? Got During so. the time that we were sticking up for Jerome's contract and saying it was mm. a good contract, everyone was going, oh, it's overs. You're not paying a six for all that sort of money. Hey, now a lot of those same people, they just they don't reply and go, oh, by the way, you got it right. They just stay quiet. They don't say anything, right? They don't know fucking anything about it. So uh, there's a little bit on and that. And I think- You know, that they'll, he'll be like, he goes, they won't really know what they've- what they've got until it's gone. Well, I think so. Because I, I think his defensive systems, his defensive like decisions, he's obviously everyone knows how good he runs, but like he's one of the best defensive wingers in the game. So, so this is where I – People don't understand that. Hey, how many times you see a winger in fucking no man's land? Mm. How many times you see Biz? Never. Every week you see them. Every in, week. You're yeah. like, how the fuck do they score that try? Why are you standing no man's land? You man. come and jam in on, on nothing. Yeah. We had, you don't do that, mate. We had Bailey Simonson come in who's injured at the moment, did some stuff with us at SEN, and I said, who's the best winger in the comp? He goes, oh, easy. Didn't even think about it. He goes, Brian Tyler. And he goes, and then, I go, what's the what's the best part about it? And who's he, next? Yeah, like he didn't Fucking, even, it's, it's daylight. It was, a, it, was a, a, Matt daylight. Automat- <laughs> it was an automatic It was an automatic response, and he mm. goes, um, I go, like, what's what separates him from the rest? He goes, bro, you know what, like, he doesn't have any weaknesses. Yeah. He goes, he's Randy Matur's height under six foot one. Yeah. But no one ever jumps <laughs> over him. And he goes, bro, it's so weird. Like we, we Is never- he taller than Ren? He's, he's got him covered. Easy. I reckon, yeah. yeah. He's, and he's five, I reckon it goes, five foot nine. I reckon it goes To'o, Taruva, then Renny. Yeah. In height. And Walshy. That's Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, smooth, Smoothie. Oregon Smoothie's got him as no, well. No, I think actually Smoothie's – Smoothie's six foot. <laughs> anyway, but no one ever ju- – like that's so weird, eh? No one ever jumps over to River and Tyler. No, so, because of the timing, right? Yeah. And he's got some hops on him as well. Yeah. That's really good coaching as well too. Yeah, Taruva's man, also coming up yeah. with it. Whatever they're doing out of Penrith. No, and again, best. this isn't like I'd, I want to be clear that I'm not bashing Penrith in any way, but <sighs> Brian Toto – if it is indeed correct that he's on 650, he's on way unders. Damn. I understand him taking unders when he signed that contract. Now his entire gang is not there. So therefore, I think Penrith and their smart operators, they've done – they know who they've got in Biza and they've let a number of good players go and they'd be looking over at what's happening oh, with some of these other players and going, Ugh, we didn't want to see them go. I think they hold on to Biza. That's my final – Do they little- come – yeah. I think they get to a fifty in a heartbeat. If I'm if I'm Ivan, if I'm um, if I'm Nathan, if I'm Yoey, fuck, I'm sorry, get, get, sign him, please. Yeah, Shut up, just, get it done. Because as I said, he, he's more than a winger. He's yes. more than a winger. He's, yeah. It's a, the personality, the person the that human. he is, the human that he is. The human matters, he, that's, and that's an and that's an extra hundred k for me. Yeah, same. That's an extra. He, he never stuffs up off the field. He doesn't do anything wrong. He's just a yeah, fucking quintessential great man that you need in your club, mate. Even have you seen him do ads? Even the ads and advertisements worth 150, 200 grand to brands. He's great if for you, on social that, media. That ad that he did with the rings and, and stuff like that, that was fucking hilarious. He's so good. Yeah. So add another 250 of sponsorship. Do you reckon Jake Jaboyevich could do that? <laughs> Jakey, uh, so funny story too. Uh, we, we um, I, I had a chat with Zach yeah. Lomax uh, about the team song that they sang, and apparently they had to get Jakey to say the real like the um, part of the song where they sort of get in and, and gave him the ass, uh, uh. something like that. And Jakey was very reluctant because it's not in his nature. I love you, Jakey. All right, let's get to uh, the second. Well, this was huge news at the start of the week before we found out about Bizza, but Stefano Uto Ikamano has. Uh, Gone and told Benji uh, he will not be at the Tigers next year. He hasn't announced who he's selecting as a team, but the favourites are the Bulldogs. And Blaze Talangi just yesterday also informed the Parramatta Eels that he will no longer be there. And if reports are true, Penrith. and this is coming from Parramatta camp, apparently it's Penrith. And that's what makes me think Toto's leaving. So there you go. Uh, let's that's go. why I just, yep. I just think that. I think there's a bit of a merry-go-round. I think some key players at the Dogs are going to be moving on. To the Tigers. You're connecting the dots. Connect, I'm connecting the dots. I'm yep. not going to say who from the dogs. And I think uh, maybe Stefano's coming to us. I don't really know. It'd be a great fit for him. It's either Melbourne or us. And I was thinking, uh, I, was, I was talking to um, Will Chambers off, cam- off camera. I was just like, what would you do if, you, if you're Stefano, right? You're a Sydney boy. You love Sydney. Um, Bellamy's a, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm-hmm. He's doing one year deals. He's doing one-year deals. I'm only going down there for Craig Bellamy. I don't want a fucking interim coach. I don't want the next man up, even if it's Billy or anything. I don't That's think it's going to be Billy. I haven't thought of that. And I'm like, I look at Ciro and I'm like, that guy's got a lot of detail. These guys, he's got that team up. 
You know what I mean? I can see myself slotting into that team, being the number one prop, going with Max King, Kikau, Preston, you know, like Curran, who else we can get, like, and then sort of make it a run. You could really make a run for it, right? Respectfully to what all those guys have done at the Bulldogs this year, and I know yeah, they've played out of their skin, mate. This. We've really we've overachieved in everybody else's mind, mm. but not in theirs. They yeah. know where they work hard, and I think. What's the is missing is a lot of the little detail, the finer details yep. in defense when it comes to market defense and like That's just little things where Ciro, he's got a lot of help there. And uh, I think he could take his game, like he's fucked around and played Origin, right? Yeah. He, he had a good couple of At games and he played Origin, right? So the, what he his ceiling is massive. So I think he's the best young prop in the game under 25. Apart from Payne, Haas, and Tino, yeah. right? So they're the they're the two, yep. and I think he's third on that list. Okay, so are under twenty five. Are, are there any names that we're forgetting? So obviously Joseph no. Carpenty, North. They're all they're all James close to thirty, bro. North, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses so Lula, under twenty five, and I think he's he's twenty three. Adams North, of yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's twenty three years old, right? Yeah, okay. And he can and he can turn. He, he goes in and out of games sometimes. He just needs to find consistency. His fitness levels are what really about Spencer good. Lenu? Spencer, yeah, but Spen- yeah, Spencer's up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. him and Spence probably, but yeah. Spencer's contracted. Mm-hmm. So I'm not even putting that. So he's a guy who's who's on the market now. Yeah, I'm just trying to throw some names. Yeah, yeah, but like he's 23 years old. He's got he's six foot four. He's 115, 16 kilo. I think even even maybe heavier. Good footwork, good passing game. He's had he's had a few uh, ribbons to his game. Yep, um, with the passing game, but he doesn't really have that much help out there. You know what I mean? Like he needs to be yeah. that number one where Clemmer should be helping him a little bit more, but he's been, you know, he's getting a little bit older. Yeah. So Mac, him and Max King would fit really well. The culture of the Bulldogs would help him so much. Um, and this is me not even knowing that he's going to um, – who he's talking to. No, I was going to ask you this question. I just like, think – What think would he bring me, to the Bulldogs regardless? I just think, yeah. yeah. I, I just think this is – that what's, what the Bulldogs can do for him do you and know, his career. Do you know what one of my favourite parts about this the whole thing with Stefano, if it is indeed true that was reported – the first person that he went and told and knocked on the door was Benji first thing Monday mm. morning. And you know I what? just think, like, it says a lot about the West Tigers. Well, let's talk about that. I want to talk about yeah, that. Well, let's, I, well, what, that why, that, why would you want to leave as a 23 year No, no, Stefano going straight to. I love that because yeah, he's a man. Knocking on the door. I, I think it says think a lot about his character. Yeah, I don't want to overshadow that. 100%. Like, I, think that's, I think that's very admirable. And, and then that's he told that, the playing group. And that's fucking great. And then that's great. how the media found out. And I, yeah, well, yeah, you think you can trust everyone. Everyone just fucking. No, but that's but that's that's the way you want it, right? Yeah. Benji first. And playing, I, res- I respect group, that. And then the media found out about yep. it and reported it. I and think that's the perfect I love that. Way that's the perfect way to go. Yep. So you look everyone in the eye. I'm leaving next year. You tell Benji. You tell the coaching staff. Thanks for everything. Yep. But I think this is the best for my my career. Yep. And obviously, like, doesn't say much about the Tigers. I don't know about. I don't know what's going to be what the Tigers are like. But it yep. doesn't look like it's the best club to play for. He's looking at his career, mm. wanting to play, wanting to play at the highest level, to play Origin, to play for Australia or whatever his dreams are. He's played Origin, but he wants to dominate the game. Mm. I can see it in him. He wants to get better. Yeah. And I don't think he looks at that that team where he's like, I'm going to get better here. Yeah. You know, so I think he's looking at – he's looking at Melbourne. He's looking at the Bulldogs. He's probably got St. George. He's got another club. So he's really got to weigh this up because this is probably going to be the biggest move of his career. Yeah. And I just think um, where the Bulldogs sit at the moment – with how sta- the stability that the Bulldogs have got at the moment with the from the chairman to the CEO to the GM to the head coaches to the pathways to everybody around there, the amount of help that can uh, – with him, that, that amount of help in the club that can help him be great. you got myself, you got Roy Satas, you got Marco Mealy, you got Josh Jackson. We're all around the club, right? You know, we do pathways, but we can come in and out of the club, mm-hmm. watch first grade train sometimes and just, you know, we can mentor him from that sort of point, help him with his game. Like, he's got a lot of help there. Whatever, if you if if come and source me out and ask me if I want to work on something, yeah, let's go down the park. Yeah. Let's go do some extras. You want to get Ogre? Yeah, sweet. You want Ciro? You got Gus? You got all these ex-players and fucking great minds of the game. Marco Milley, Kevin Mark, yeah. Serato, Phil Gould. Yeah, you got these guys that are willing to help every single person from under 16s to first grade. Yep. And I just think the stability of the club at the moment is probably the best it's been since fucking I was there. This this is why I'm very symp- – and I, and I agree with everything you said. Yeah. This is why I'm very sympathetic with the Tigers fans. I feel like there are signs of improvement there and with Richo being involved and I still want to give Benji a full year. But I understand Stefano looking and, and looking at Tommy Talao and Luke Brooks at Manly and going – they're having career best years. Um, he can look at Sean Bloor at the Melbourne Storm and going, he's arguably one of the most improved players. So I can understand. You can look at it from both ways, go, you're like, oh, I could tough this out for another two or three years. I'll be 26 then. 
You know what I mean? Uh, maybe I could – are we still going to be in the same position? Like he's, he's just second-guessing because he's seen a lot of players be stuck there. Probably Luke Brooks stuck there for 10 years. He's the prime example. Yeah, prime example. He's like, I don't want to be fucking here for 10 years. Mm. I want to go somewhere else right now because I want to be fucking here quicker than I want to be, mm. right? Playing in a team that's always in the bottom four, wooden spoon, all this sort of shit. You don't want that. You know what I mean? You know, if he plays in a top four team, a top eight team, they're looking at him all the time because he's going to be the catalyst for you to win. Mm. Front rolls do that. And he, he needs to play with better players. People, so, players that can help him be better. Yeah, we'll see. That's Reed Mann is a great hooker. That's why it'd be frustrating for me because I'd be looking at him going, look, Uppy's been doing it for the last couple of years, but he feels like th he definitely needs some help. Jerome's on his way. I think Taruva's going to be a really underrated buy for him. If yeah. they manage somehow now well, – may, It ain't going to change his game. Maybe with – well, it's not going to fucking hurt it. I know, but it's not going to change – having Luai in his team is not going to change his game. I think it will. You reckon? Yeah, I think the direction of Jerome Luai to help Lachlan Galvin out, you know what it's like, mate. I don't know because because he's going to – Let me gonna, explain is he gonna, this. Sorry, he's going to play seven, is Let he me Luai? explain this, yeah, mate. If he's seven, sorry, if he's seven, yeah, he would be. If you're playing with Shifty Sherwin at the Bulldogs in 04 and during your career and whoever it was, I don't want to highlight – anyone else that come in but when Shifty's not playing how much oh, like yeah. you're still going to play your role to the yeah. best of your ability but throughout a season you start going fuck it'd be yeah, nice to have Shifty game. here kicking to the corners finishing sets well and that stuff starts to wear down on you so this that's is where the, I think sorry, Jerome yeah, would be so, outstanding for yeah, him yeah and I'll double down on that as well because when you talk about field position mm. all the time and yes. you just they constantly lose field position in the washing machine so in the washing machine yeah. he's non-stop making fucking tackles he's non-stop he's, he's hit ups a fucking like on the third or fourth tackle in their 40 mm. when people are just lining up on you. Yeah. Like he's never in a good position where you're on front foot now, our back five, the back five get to like, you know, the 40 or 50 and then, you know, you're in an attacking set. He's never in those positions. Very rarely. Because of the fact that they're always losing field position with mm. fucking drop balls, with the fundamentals and everything like that. He's yeah. over it. He's fucking over it. So that's where I think Jerome would so improve. That's, I know Jerome would improve yeah. the field position and everything yeah. like that, but I think he's just made his decision now. He's like, fuck, what's Jerome going to do to and me? That's it's, not understandable. Like, it's not like you've got Payne Haas. And that's like understandable. In his head, in a front yeah. rower's mindset, you're like, fucking give a shit who you get. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, which Luai, no doubt, would help his game. Yep. Leadership and the kicking game and like field position. He knows how to build pressures, build sets. He don't know what Galvin's going to do. Do you know what I mean? He's still unsettled. That's It makes me think with this uh, – you know, Galvin said all the right things now, and, and look, I don't want to put words in his mouth because he. Galvin should say because fucking Luai's coming. But he goes, if he's an eighteen-year-old kid. Stefano's been there for at least four. Oh yeah, no, no, sorry, so the situations are completely different. Yeah. Stefano is now off contract; he can do whatever he wants. Okay, I agree yeah, with Lockton right. Galvin staying there, but mm. I'm talking about like long term. There's a part of me that thinks if Stefano sort of made the decision, he, you know, you know, players chat between themselves. I wouldn't be surprised to see if they're not successful straight away, then it's going to be so much harder to keep Lachlan. I think mm. that the way that next year, the way he connects with Jerome, if they're able to get so, – if they get so, – so I, I'm not even – I don't even need them to be like the Bulldogs knocking on a top four. If they're the Dragons next year, like who have overachieved in a lot of people's eyes and are just on the eight and nine, that's a great season for the Tigers. And then you can look at the Dragons now and go – yeah, it's sort of an underwhelming squad, but you can see that Flano's trying to implement something there. Yeah, if Tigers would, can get to that point next year and, and just get yeah. off like last place. And I would have been like, yeah, maybe they would have. Maybe they could next year with Stefano mm. and Bole yeah. and uh, Fainu, like yeah. all these guys. He's got a good team there. And yeah. I'm like, that's what makes me go, it's deeper than just like – the team. Yeah. It's deeper than the team because they're all these brothers that he come through. You know, yeah. he's got a brotherhood there. You got Luai coming. You got Taruva coming. Who else she can get over? And he still wants to leave. Mm. So it's deeper than just and it's not this. It's not money. It's def definitely not. It's not, not money. fucking money. So it, I'm just so I'm like it sounds like it's, it's gonna take a lot deeper mm. than him just fucking wanting to leave. Yeah. Like just because of like and it's it's, it's a I don't know. It's good luck to him. He looked good he looked good in Blue Might. Let's move to Blaze Delungy. Yeah, yes. Who was the other guy? So it's been reported that it's going to be Penrith, right? Mm -hmm. And um, when you uh, connect the dots, all the reports were that Blaze Talungi wanted to play fullback. He ain't going to play fullback at Penrith. So is Blaze Talungi going to Penrith to play centres or potentially Jerome Luai moving on? Is he going to go play six where he played during the juniors? Not a chance through? he's going to play six. I know Taylor May's out. So he could easily slot into the centre position. Those McLean or, brothers have been looking pretty yeah, clean. Yes, <laughs> very clean, McLean. Are your McLean showing? 
They are. I like that Casey McLean, bro. Um, like I think – And Jesse, who's injured. They him. are young kids coming up. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that makes sense is him playing on the wing. I don't know. I'm, I, I think it's to say if Bizza stays, if, if Bizza goes, then send it outside back. But I, I still need to little, see a little bit more from Jay Cole, Jack Cole. Oh, Jay Cole. Jay Cole, he played a few games. I don't think uh, the journeyman that they've got at the moment is the long-term answer. Dane what Laurie has been reported. Schneider. Schneider, that's it. Dane Laurie has been reported playing six. I think there's a real – I think if Blaze Talangi goes there, he's competing for the six jersey with – Fuck no. Why would he want to play six? He's a, he's a waste of talent at six. Playing outside of Nathan with – Yeah. Edwards out the back. Because he's still going to have to just pass and – he's a runner, bro. Well, that's what Jerome is. Yeah, but like it's just, he's, he's just on one side of the – I think he's going to be a centre or a winger. He needs space. But that's what – he'd still be on one side of the field with yeah, that. Yeah, I know, but he's got to pass. I just think he's a, he's the you one You prefer that, him catching – I want him to get fucking one-on-ones and shake blokes. Okay, all right. I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, and if, and if Toto's not there, he can play there. He can play centre wing. I think he's going there for centre wing, mate. Definitely not 5'8". Are you reluctant with the way that he played 5'8"? It seemed like it was too much for Fuck him? Fucking oath it is was. That, is that your yes. problem with it? And I think it obviously would be a lot better with that system out there. Yep. But he's still not going to be running. He's I, a runner, bro. I, I, I disagree. I still think he can. I think if you've got Nathan and Dylan Edwards, you I think he to. can do a lot of things. Mm. But I would to, to get the best out of Blaze Salungi, mm. he's going to be a centre or a winger. Because he's a great finisher. Right he, now, do you think right he's now, the, in his future he can play six and four? Maybe. Yeah, okay. Maybe. All right. Maybe. But and at this I, age? I think he might, yeah, at this age, okay. just run the ball, have some fun playing football. And, you know, he's because he's such a footballer and we mm. just don't know what position he's going to play, you know, he can just play whatever sport. He can play whatever sport. He can play whatever position he wants. Yeah. And they, they'll figure it out, Penrith. Then he'll, they'll figure him out, what he's yeah. like. Because I think he just got chucked in there because of um, Moses being out. I don't think he come through the system as a 5'8". Well, I know he played fullback. Yeah, he's a fullback centre wing. Oh, yeah. That's what he is. He's like a Jared Hain clone. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. what he is. Hainsey could have easily played 5'8". He like, had the skill set, right? He did play a few But it was a fucking waste of time mm. because he's such a fucking threat when he's out a little bit wider. Yeah, or either side of the ball. Yes. Board. Yeah. You know, I can so understand I'm looking, that. I look at that and go, yeah, he's, yeah, he's the future of the game, right? He could be mm. the face of the game in a couple of years. It's just how they cultivate him and just – Put him in the centres, put him in the wing. Okay, so now our concerns with Stefano about looking at the club and then still uh, – if it is perceived that he is going to go to a different club for unders to help progress his unders. career. Oh, you're going for unders. Well, he, yeah. He'll, okay. go to, he'll, go to, sorry, sorry, no, he'll go to Melbourne for unders. Yeah, okay. So you think Bulldogs will still have to pay the right amount for him or the yeah. for, pay for his potential on top I think of that's what he's worth. I okay. think he's worth it. Like he's, as I said, like he's the best young prop in the game. Who's off contract, and I think he's probably demanding like the nine fifties. Okay, you know? okay, that's what that's what the market is. That's what the market is. All right. So, what does this say about Blaze though? Right now, um, <laughs> if he if if he is, you think he's going to go there and play centre and wing? Why hasn't he stayed at Parramatta and played centre and wing? Why hasn't I think what happened when they signed the the what's it, Lomax. Stadium. Yeah, that's all right. I Keep think going. what they, you know, I think when they signed Lomax, yeah. I think he found that disrespectful. Okay, I think you know he's yep. a young kid. I'm like, I play center and I play center and wing. Like you go, he's coming here to play center. Yeah, Will definitely Penicini's not wing. Definitely and Will Penasini's a center. Yeah, and then you got Simonson, who's fucking decent. Yeah, he had a really good year until Simonson's he got injured. Really until he got injured this year, so that you still got. I'm not sure what Mike Sivo's doing. Yeah, I think he I might be a little Sivo's bit at the end. But I'm like, maybe he wants to play center, and he's like, fuck, you brought him there now. I think – and then when you're sort of young and you're stubborn and you, you find you're disrespected at that level and you're like, I'm a fucking local junior, you're going to get this guy for fucking 850, mm. like he's a winger, you know, I can play centre, he's going to come and take my spot, fuck it, I'm going. Yeah. That's what I feel like that's, that's sort of happened. I mean, these young kids are different, man. I think it ain't loyalty. It ain't like, oh, I'm a junior in the club. Nah, man. Well, here's, here's <laughs> if you don't respect me like that, I'll go somewhere else. So we just talked about the gang with uh, with Bizza and and his reasonings. So um, I he believe coming really through for for Blaze Talungi, he played with uh, one Matt Arthur, who has been oh, granted okay. passionate uh, compassionate grounds a release because of what happened with his uh, dad, which is understandable. Oh. I think it's great from all parties. That I think they it's come great up for Parramatta to do that. Well, I don't know. Like I think he's got a good. I think he's a good player. Yeah. Where would he end up? 
BA might be in their little fucking – Yeah, maybe the uh, could be uh, somewhere. An expansion team. Could be somewhere. An expansion team. Uh, mm. He goes somewhere in the short term we'll and def- then links up back, back with Dad if he takes he on one to of be the a backup somewhere, 18th, 19th, 20th. I reckon Matt Arthur. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm we can go through that. Anyway, yeah, my okay, point okay. is Matt Arthur was his teammate coming through and also Ethan Sanders who is now going down to Canberra next year. So the gang that he come through with at Parramatta in the junior level, they've all moved on as well. It's very similar to the business yeah. sort of um, critter argument. But when you're a young kid and you're dealing with older players, you know, when you're in the opens, like mm. you're an 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid, you want to hang out with those sort of players still. Yeah. You want to hang out. He's, he, ain't, he ain't hanging out with Gutho or Moses mm. or Dylan Brown mm. or Junior Paulo, Reg, Cartwright. All those blokes have been there for like fucking eight years. They've all got 10 plus years on yeah. their age. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? like, and it's like it's a, such a big disparity in age yeah. and it's like you don't – nothing familiar with these guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, fuck it, I'll just go out there. There's a lot of young kids out west and Penrith, yeah. Penrith seemed like a good fit. Well, like if you look at the team that um, he would be going to, if it is, you know, indeed Penrith, then he's got the McLean brothers who come through during his, same his age, era. Same age. Um, you know, they played under 19 yep. with Matt Arthur and Blake Tulangi would have been a part teams. of that team if he wasn't playing first grade. Um, you know, he's, he's so that's appealing to him, I think. And, uh, yeah, you're right. There's, there's such a big age gap. Gap difference, and I can understand Parry going. Yeah, it is what it is. The same when, when I come through, I was 18, 19, I had to go fucking hang out with Bradley Clyde. He was 32, <laughs> and I said, Man, I'm gonna retire you, and I did. <laughs> Love you, and, and, and then and look, it, it took until your gang had sort of come yes, through. Yes, it, it took a minute. Yeah, it was only Braith and I that were in there. Braith was younger than me. Yeah. We only played one game that year in 2000. I was there nearly the whole year. Yeah, and then what, 2003? Then the next year, 2001. That's when they filled – No, 2001 started – like me and Braith and I played the whole year. Still very young, 22, 2002, still like the only guy. Still 2003, three, four. Then they all sort of come yeah. through. So you were just with OGs for like yeah. two or three years. Uh, that's why I am what I am. <laughs> that's why you're the triple OG. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's, I find it quite interesting that Parramatta probably would have got to the point where they're like, and, and knowing his manager too, knowing my, Isaac, Isaac would have set a number on potential. Parramatta are probably looking at it, looking at it with all the players that they've got on contract. And the contract situation at Parramatta is diabolical. Diabolical. Like all of the player options and mutual like options that they've got is going to be very problematic yeah. moving forward. Lukey's going to be crying yeah. all year. Well, lukey has been sending us – Lukey was trying to create a rumour in our group chat for me to <laughs> – uh, No, I'm not doing it. Look at him coming in. Here you go. <laughs> Look at him. A journal reported it. Yeah, but nah, yeah, it wasn't on. exclusive. If it's not exclusive, don't believe it. Right, so Lukey was – Is it Bulldog, Richie? Yeah. I believe that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that now needs to be. There's th- we've got six months before we're going to figure out what's happening at Parramatta. Mm. So do you reckon any of these moves will happen in the next couple of weeks? I'll, or are these just rumors? no, no, not in the next couple of weeks. I think uh, moves will happen in the off season if they do. Soon happen. as Parramatta's done, yes, because then you don't have to face the music. Well, also <laughs> if you do it during the finals period, everyone's no talking about the finals. Yeah, it'd be smart. It'd be smart if if, if Blazers manager. Which is – Oh, no, not Blaze. I think Blaze gets done. Blaze's I think, done? I think I – think, I'll think, run it out? It's been reported that Blaze will get done – I'm talking about Parramatta specifically. <laughs> yeah. I think any of the movements they've, they've got to do with some of the OGs, if they do do it, will be done in finals time. Oh, it'll be done like around 26, 27. Yeah. So everyone's talking about finals footy and not as worried about it. But Smart. it'll still – But who knows? Mm. You don't know. Yeah. We do not know. We so, do not know. Uh, one thing I do want to know is – are the Roosters in on either, either of these guys? Why would have the Roosters sorry, been so Valentine quiet? Valentine Holmes look good at uh, right centre for the Roosters? I think so. Jesus. Yeah. You just lost the man, Joey Manu, and, and you can get Val Holmes. And a prospect like Joseph Suali. Come on, bro. Like, they need a centre. You've got the, one of the best centres in the comp who's probably going to get a little bit from uh, the Cowboys mm. and get topped up from the Roosters. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Jeez. They're Val- they we Hey. If he's going to come down to Sydney, he's going there unless he has a real strong tie with Flano. And that would make sense. That would make sense. But I'm like, if he wants to win, does what if he's looking at life after football, what the Roosters can give him opportunity-wise and provide. If you're successful with the Roosters, then it it goes goes beyond. It's it's a a great club and I just think they're – they're not very noisy, right? They're not noisy like all the other clubs. Are that's about. why. That's my point. Look what this. happened with fucking uh, David Fafita. Well, Do you see, know what I mean? See, that's my question. And and like I, I think 
um, Val Holmes would for sure be a good rooster. I think he makes a lot of sense. Well, he's a good looking cat too. I feel like the roosters have been so quiet now, right, with all this Blaze Talungi and, and uh, Stefano news. Sh- there has to be conversations with those two. Well, well, no Jared, we no Luke that? Keary, no Joseph Manu, no Joseph Swali. What, what did we say when we talked about when um, Fafita was talking to Penrith? I'm mm. like, he ain't coming down to Sydney to talk to Penrith only, mm. you know? Yeah, uh, and the Uncle reports Nick where makes, he was talking Uncle to Nick roosters makes, first. Un, un, yeah, Uncle Nick makes a call, and then he'll be he'll have a meeting in his uh, in the toaster mm. down at Circular Key. <laughs> Been there before, bro. <laughs> uh, okay. They don't miss. They don't miss. They don't miss. Once you get in, once you get in front of the that crew there and what they can provide for you. Yep, they don't miss. I tell you who didn't miss as well, Gordy Tallis. Uh, he had a yeah, big well, couple of days. What happened? What happened? I'll, I'll fill you in. Come on. Uh, big couple of nights on uh, 360 with questioning Adam Reynolds' captaincy during this period right now. And what, what the last two through. weeks? Yeah. So Gordon Tallis doubled down on his call to strip Adam Reynolds of the Bronco captaincy mm. and made no apology for protecting coach Kevin Walters in a tense live TV exchange with veteran journalist Crawls. So him and Crawls are going back and forth. Crawls was basically insinuating that the reason that he called for Adam Reynolds' captaincy to be con- um, considered was because at the moment – Kevy is starting to get some darts. And Crawls is was basically imploring that in in a way to, to look after his mate, which is understandable. And this and Gordy said it flat out. He's like, um, Ricky gets protected by certain um, members of the media. Old boys used to look after Des when he was coach of Manly. So like, why wouldn't he look after Kevy? Which is understandable. You're in a position like that. I just think in order to look after your mate. Kevy, I think Gordy missed the mark in then directing it to someone who didn't deserve a straight, and that's Adam Reynolds because I think he's been a good captain and at the club. And you, you got to think about a few things. He's that, missed the fucking whole year, Nelly. But captaincies, it's not also all about playing. So during the times that Kevy has been targeted over the last year by a player that's still on the roster in Selwyn Cobbo and a player that left, it's been Adam Reynolds that's always had Kevin Walters back. Yeah. Like he's been the one consistent that's always – Vouch for Kevy. So therefore, yeah, if, I'm, if you I'm are going to point, yeah. if you're going to point away from Kevy, don't point at the guy that's that's no. had, that's had Kevy's back during this time the last couple of years. I don't know. I just think that's my big thing. This on is it. like just it's low hanging fruit to pick on Kevy, right? And it's lower to even pick on Adam Reynolds. Do you know what I mean? I don't think anyone. Do, oh, Kevy's like, how much work can Kevy do? Right? Like they do. It's when does the uh, players take accountability for just being fucking really bad this year in some important games. Mm. They've done – they've had nearly pretty much the same team. Obviously, Flegler and all that, we all know that. They've, yep. they've missed it. That's what happens with every team. But they've had the same fucking players most most of the time. They've just been out of form. They've been very complacent. They haven't played their best. This is not Kevy's fault. It's not fucking Adam Reynolds' fault either. No, it's not. None of them – it's none of their fault. It's the whole collective of the of the playing group. Like they're still getting coached exactly the same. It's not like Kevy's just changed the whole the whole game plan and just like going, okay, new year, new this. You know what I mean? Like they've they've always stuck to the same thing. They've lost Reynolds for ten weeks, a very important part of the year. Yeah, they couldn't get those wins, right? Look, look what and happened to Canberra with Fogarty. Same thing. They look at, they lost look at you know Stags and you know like Cobo. They all great years last year. Ricky was being out for a little bit. Carrigan and Payne Haas have been the only ones that had, like had great years in Jensen, mm. Billy Walters. You know everyone else. Key Peaker has been out. Um, like Ezra Mans had a down year. Like they all had de- most of them had down years apart from three of them. Mm. And it's not. This is not the coach's fault. It's not the captain's fault. It's not fault. all his fault. It's not all his fault. It's, it's like, not all the captain's like, fault. It's not because it's not the cap- it's not the captain's fault. What do you want Reynolds to do? Mm. He's not that fucking uh, an Andrew Johns halfback or a JT. He gets on. He's one of the best game managers in the game. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he kicks you, he kicks him, gets him in great positions. He, he brings back Walsh every now and again, like pulls him in the line and pulls Ezra Man into the line because they're young, young players full of confidence. And every time he's been on the field, they play their best football. You know what I mean? I'm not sure how we can just sort of pick on Adam Reynolds. Adam Reynolds has been great out there. Yeah, so that's the that's the main part of this. Yeah, and, I just and, don't understand. And there's and there's blame associated all the way around for the roster to the captaincy to the recruitment. Um, someone, you know, like if you think about what's happened to the Broncos in the last couple of years, first year with Kevy involved, when, when he got it, it was a dumpster fire. And a part of him being involved was bringing all the old boys back in. So I can understand Gordy looking after him. But they finished 14th, was, 9th. Was, was Crawls going in on Kevy? 
Not necessarily. He was going in on Gordy more about deflecting any portion of blame to Kevy. So that's that's fair as well. Yeah. So the fairness is everyone is associated blame in what's happening. Like it's not like it's everyone. never it's never just the coach. It's no, never no, no, just it's the everyone. Players. It's the playing group. It's, it's the coach. It's like everybody together. Like let's just not try and separate everything. That's what trying people try and do. Like oh, it's the coach's fault. It's not the coach's fault. Oh, it's the captain's fault. No, it's the fucking collective group. It's the playing. Mm. It's the players' group, mm. right? They've just lost games just. They got complacent. They thought they were going to win most games. They kept on getting beat. Next minute, they fucking lost seven from eight. And they're like, shit, how'd they get away? Because they're young as well. This team's young. They're very young. You know mm. what I mean? Like the only guy there is Adam Reynolds. He's the only old guy who's over 30. Yeah, no, Everyone else is fucking 20. Yeah, Capel's moved on. All the rest are like 26 and under. In saying that, that's the that's where you want. Your I know players. you think that you know, they would come out and just destroy teams, but they didn't because Adam Reynolds is the catalyst for fucking kicking games and everything like. That. Ezra Mann, they thought he was going to come in. Jock Madden come in. Fucking everyone was playing seven. They just couldn't get the job done. In saying that, no one cares. Reese Walsh fucking injured most of the year and battled. You know, so like here's here's who's here's who's going to cop the blame. And this is just the nature of the business that we went. Sports, any 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 sport, whether it's rugby league, rugby union, here's who's going to cop the most pressure and whether it's unfair or not 50% of the time if it's over a three to four year period like the Broncos are now it's probably going to be Kevy 50% then you filter in about 25% of the blame to maybe the captain and then How the, captain, the 25% like, how the captain? Like, that's got, just the nature but of but you got five sport, captains mates. you got five like it's like he, he as I said he runs out first you got a leadership group yep. of about five so here you my can't last put on the fucking captain my last 25% is the star players right yeah so that's that's where a, whether it's fair or not this is just what happens it's like not just specifically to the Broncos. It's the way that sports are. More often than not, 50% of the time, coach. Everyone wants to fire the coach straight away. Then people start talking about either the leadership, which leadership. is i.e. Adam Reynolds is the captain right now. And then if people still can't see, like if, if the if the team's going to galvanise or, or players or the club are going to galvanise around the coach and, and captains and support them, then the next is the star players, right? So that's when you start talking about the Paddy Carrigans, the Reese Walshers and the Payne Harses. Right, Cobos and that, like, despite the Cobo situation, as good as they are, they're not the star players. So they're always going to be. You think Cobo's a star player? Not compared to Reese Walsh, Paddy Carrigan, and Payne Haas. No, fuck, he's on. He's close, but not even cl- nah. And not, stags. not when it comes Come to not, not when it comes to when you watch a Broncos game. Yeah. You you think Selwyn Cobo, Katoni Stags, Dean Marion are going to be the icing? Like they're luxury. Like yeah. if you've got players like them, they're Talent luxury. Wise, they're up there, yeah. But the core and the meat and potatoes are Adam Reynolds, Payne Haas, Pat Carrigan, and Reese Walsh. And I'm not saying it's fair. And man. Ezra Mam. Ezra Mam's still on the outside for me. He hasn't proved it for a long period of time where he is the dude. I think it's like those four guys. This year, right? Yeah, I, I get even, it, I get it. But I'm just thinking Ezra, Ezra should be in there because he's in that spine. Just on the outside. Just, oh, just. Well, I fucking expect him to be fucking on the inside. Of course. Because he's got that much talent. And that's why. Or he's copping a bit of blame, mate. Well, yeah, of course. He, and, and all of them are right now, Because right? of the fucking what he did in the ground. So my point is whether it's fair or not, that's what happens with Team C. Yeah, now, I, know, I understand. Now it's sort of. They've got a microscope over the Broncos because they finished 14th in his first year, then 9th. They were fucking three minutes away from winning a, a grand final. They got a spoon once. No, they didn't get the spoon. They got it under Seeds, I think. But Kevy got him to 14th, okay. then 9th, and then 2nd. And now they're currently sitting in 13th. 13th with the squad that they've got. And the problem is yeah. that – Everyone gave them a pass in the first two years because of what they've come through and then the young players. Now they're all 25. They deserve 26. what they're getting. They, <laughs> no, I'm telling yeah. you, they deserve yeah. what they're getting. Yeah. Like, if you have a look right now where yeah. they are on the fucking uh, on the ladder, I'm like, how are they there? Mm. I'm not going to pick on an individual, but they just – because you're the Broncos, right? Yeah. That's why they – and everyone wants to knock, knock off the Broncos and everyone wants to see the Broncos go bad, but like – because of what they did last year, and everyone expected them to go up that one one more stop, one more one more level to win the grand final. We thought, we Broncos. thought, everybody thought, yeah, everybody thought that. And for them to be f- where they are now, this is what you get. Yes, this is exactly what you get. And Everyone's they know, the they know that, they know that. Mm. Kevin knew that. Like when you when you fucking show how good you are, and then you have the same roster pretty much, obviously apart from the players that we mentioned, and you deliver this shit. And then you have a look at a team like the Bulldogs and the Dolphins and all these other teams that are in the top mm. eight because they're fucking gritty and grindy and they hustle and they work hard. Mm. 
what the fuck is happening? Yeah. So this is why they're going to cop it. And they know they're going to cop it because they're the Broncos and they've got superstar players. I'm not, But I'm not going to sit here and individualise people and go, it's Captain's fault, it's Kevy's fault. It's the fucking whole group. Yeah, that's why. And I the coaches, the system. From everybody that's at training every day, it's everyone's fault. And another, another point that someone tossed up yesterday, and this is a text that we got through while we're doing radio, Ben Eichen left at the start of last year just before they went on a bit of a run. So he was a part of the two-year period oh, that they, they had a little, little bit of a rebuild and, and got players he playing consistently. Now? He's uh, Queensland Rugby League. So <sighs> there's another factor that a lot of, a lot of people uh, I don't think might Ben Eichen's got anything to do with anything. He would have he would have orchestrated like the the roster and tried to recruit and everything, but, but that's it's what not, Gus does at the Bulldogs. Yeah, I know, How but like you're not going to think like it's different. Gus, him and Gus, you can't compare those two. Well, I know, but that's a version of Gus. That's yeah. what Gus, so that's what yeah. makes Gus so great, right? Yeah. So therefore, you can't dismiss it if Benny Eichen mm. has, has assembled this crew, got Reese Walsh back Recruited, for unders from yeah. the New Zealand Warriors, right? That was a yeah. huge. Uh, he, he he signed, but him, but him leaving it doesn't just. It, once you've assembled that group, like yeah, good, Kevy, go. I mean, um, like Benny, you can go, and we we got this right. Yeah. You know, like he did, he done a real well. Yeah, he did it. He did a good job, right? But he's not there at training all the time. He's not at fucking. He's he's there after games and everything like. Mm. But he's not there at training. He's you don't not doing pathways. Stability? He's not there. You don't think no, it like stability? he's not that. He doesn't have that aura about him. Mm, okay. Like he's a fucking great human, Benny Eichen, But he does. He's not walking around. You know, like like a fucking Wayne Bennett and a you know like a, a, Gus. a Gus, you know, where they demand respect and they're fucking you know people go out of their way to fucking you know shake his hand. And do you think it's appealing to some guys? Him being like a like a really smart operator, though. I think a lot yeah. of young players. Look I like, like Ben Ike. Yeah. He's a great operator. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's yeah, probably I, probably better presented than Braith too. I, I don't, <laughs> he's got Braith covered, and I'm not sure if that is like I'm just saying. There are little things, a number little, of things that factor things. into what's happening, and yeah, I think uh, again that is another factor in my it, opinion. There's a lot, and, I, and, and as I'm always saying, like when they start blaming coaches, I'm, I'm always a big uh, believer. Like it's the players' fault, man. Mm. It is the players' fault. Them getting out there, all you're doing as a coach is prepping these guys for 80 minutes, 80 minutes of war, and you got to just go fuck. I hope to God that I've put all that work in. They go out there and they've underperformed. Have you? But simple. <sighs> The only reason I push back on that is that you've had great coaches, mate. You've had Wayne Bennett. You've had these coaches yeah. where, like, whatever they say, you'll run through a brick wall for Yeah, those I know. Guys. We've also played for coaches where they've said shit and we've gone, that ain't it. But I thought they had that playing group that's strong enough to go out there and go, fucking who cares even if Kevy's sending the wrong message. We still go out and get the business that's done. That's true. You know and, what I mean? Uh, like, that's what, like, that's what you are as a pro. Like, yeah. you don't really need – you've done the coaching in the, the preseason. You've got you've got a great team. We know what's going on. Like, yeah. you get out there and do the business. That's yeah. what Penrith do. I don't think Cleary's fucking changed. In the, the goalposts every year, every week. You know, like he's oh, he's a good he's a good Ivan's coach. Such a good like job, you know, he, he's a great job. Yeah. But you don't really you're not doing that much of coaching because these guys know what they're doing. Well, I think you could have a really bad fucking you could have a bad prep week. We used to have shit weeks sometimes, mm. but and we knew we have to go out there. You cross that line, bang, it's on. You were more talented. Shift, than yeah, anyway. shifty used to kick out on the full fucking and be off, drop balls, everything like that. No one cared. Because mm, you were going to take like, care of it. Because he's going to do it on the weekend. Yeah. Braith could be, do that. I could be like that. Sunny, we could be dropping balls and that. We'd be hard – and we were so hard on each other. Yeah. And we're like, okay, well, I've got confidence in him. He's going he's gonna, to – he'll be fine. What about your confidence in the baguette? The baguette, yeah. <laughs> Zero comment. <laughs> Zero. All right, let's get into the NRL W picks, mate. Le um, last week I went four from five in the picks. I'm actually – Good start. Fuck yeah. Did you? Four from five. Um, a couple of them were short price favorites. And again, nah, they're probably no, going to no. be short price this week as well. Raiders versus the Knights. Both these teams were really good in week one. The Knights knocking off the Roosters. The Raiders uh, emphatically had a, a big win against, I think it Tigers. was the Tigers. It was too. Um, I'm going to go uh, Knights to win this game and Yasmin Clydesdale, $3.50 any time. Uh, Titans, they're my team to win the competition this year. Um, really Chapman. Good start. Chapo. Chapo didn't get a try last week, so I'm doubling up on her. I'm going again. Dollar eighty. Sharks should get a double. Yeah, nice. I'm with, I'm with you on that one. Uh, the Eels versus Sharks. Eels well, are probably the upset of the week. That was the only one I got wrong because they beat the Broncos, but the Sharks are impressive and Tiana Penatini 
A friend of the show was also impressive. Three dollars any time for her. Uh, the Roosters get their OG back. Sam Bremner's back. Um, she uh, retired last year, but with the news of Corbin Baxter doing her ACL, she has returned. She's at fullback for the Roosters. They lost the Corbin first week. Corbin do ACL. ACL, yeah. She's a she's legend, man. Out for the season. So I've got Sam Bremner any time at three dollars. The fullback for the Roosters to beat the Broncos. And as for the Cowboys versus the Dragons, both these two teams lost, but I still think. The Dragons are going to be a tricky team for teams this year. So I'm on the Dragons, and I've got – they're underdogs too, by the way. Kezi App still at the Dragons? Kezi App is at the Tigers with, right, with Noddy. Year, yep. uh, uh, Tegan Berry, anytime try scorer. I think she was the top try scorer last year. I've got her $2.15 for the Dragons. All right, let's get into the NRL Round 22 West Tigers mm. versus the Cowboys. Saturday, 7.50 p.m. at Leichhardt Oval. West Tigers, welcome back. Justin Ollum from a knee injury. Uh, while – Luke Laulili is replaced by Solomon Alamalo. Uh, David Clemmer is back from an ankle injury, which sees Fenua Pole sideline. He had a rib injury from last week's game. As for the Cowboys, Sam McIntyre takes over a prop for Jason Tomalolo. White Harrison Edwards fills in for the void. Huge one, too, from Ruben Cotter. Holland Lukey's return from a hamstring injury pushes Kuli Kefu Fene Fuyaki to the bench. He started last uh, week. Tomalolo cracked eye socket. Oh, wow. Yeah. Four That's weeks, huge. four weeks. I remember doing mine. Um, I think I was out for two, maybe. Man, I got Jason's a scar. Just I got a scar. They got a scar there. I remember I had a head clash with Big Zane Tedavano, and then I ran into fucking Sunny shoulder. Just boom, boom, double hit in five minutes. That would have been nice. Kept playing, but you know, <laughs> we got fucking pumped. Hey, but um, shoot but I, I didn't even know. Yeah, it's yeah. a bad one because yeah. like you fucking you, all you feel is you just got a fucking numb, bump. Yeah, like a bit of a and you, you know it's fucked. Throbbing, it you know throbs. it's fucked. Yeah. So they had to take a. a, a Take my skull out, a bit of my skull, and then put it into here with some metal and shit like that. It's fucking up. A um, couple of weeks, yeah. But that's well, he's is he's is, he's is, he's is pretty bad. That's three to four weeks. I think he he'd be back for the finals. So they took out a bit of your Anthony Griffin, did they? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Peter Mulholland. <laughs> Rest in peace. Um, Love your skull, mate. Jason Tomalolo has been unreal in the yeah. past month. I reckon he's going to be a huge loss, and their emotional leader through the middle. Two or three. Something tricky here for the Tigers. Plus nine and a half. Can plus, you? Plus, it's a it's a rivalry game. Back to two thousand five when they beat him in the grand final. True. You always think about that. I think Cowboys have too much class. They have to. They have to win. They got to win every game. What they're, about they're, what the Tigers did to him at Leichhardt last year? Yeah, I know. Year. And that's what they'll be looking at. They'll be thinking that in the back of their head. They'll be yeah. like, "We're going to fuck you up." Is this at Leichhardt? Leichhardt. Shit. Oh uh, yeah, that's fucking hard. I think. Uh, what do you reckon? Uh, what do you reckon? What version of Stefano do we see in this game? I think you see a beast. I think this will be his last game before he announces his team on Friday. I think he goes all out. No Jace, no Ruben. Fuck, I'm sort of talking myself into the Tigers here. Uh, I'm yeah. going to stay with Cowboys. Okay, I'll go, I'll go Tigers. Okay, reluctantly. I'm yeah, not, reluctantly, not just so it's a bit of a game and okay. I can just sort of muck around. But yeah, I think, yeah, that's a, that's, it's that team. They're, they're hard to beat at Leichhardt, man. Mm. Yeah, they are. Is it Friday night, you say? It's Thursday night. Tonight. Thursday night, tonight. Yeah. So that's going to be really shit weather, right? Count that in. Yep. Raining, windy, freezing. Mm. Cowboys don't like that shit, even though obviously fucking no one likes playing this crap. I think the Tigers will get it. All right. Warriors versus Eels Friday, 6 p.m. at Go Media Stadium. We have the Warriors welcoming back Sean Johnson from an Achilles injury. Uh, Chance Nickel Clocks, that is also back from a calf injury. Therefore, Roger moves to the wing. Ed Cossie and Tamare Martin drop out to the reserves. Jeez. A knee injury to bench forward. Jackson Ford brings Tom Ale in. Um, for the Eels, interim coach Trent Barrett has stuck with the same team that went down to the storm in round 22. Uh, Tab have got the dollar twenty three for the Warriors, the Waz. Favourites at home. Parramatta of 4.20. The line is 13 and a half. I'm not that confident in the Waz at that line, eh? No, fuck. Where's this at? Over there? At Mount Smart, yep. Fuck, it'd be hard. It'd be hard. I'm going to go to the Waz. They got my, they're, a lot, they're still mathematically in, in, the, in the chase. You know, they need every single game. Yep. And I'm going to back them. All right, I'll go opposite of you just to keep it interesting. Yeah. Again, let's go opposite yeah, of each like other. Parramatta's still unless, team. unless we like completely agree. So I'll go the plus 13 and a yeah. half about Parramatta because I, I just think, think that's like, way too know, much. In, in their head, they still got to if they win every game and yeah. some um, things go the other way they can probably True. they can slip in so they're going to be every game is like a grand final for the Warriors and just, you'll see what they're made of and the chaos continues at the Eels too doesn't it mm. um, the That's Dolphins versus oh yeah fuck yeah I'm thinking Warriors eh? but I'll stick stay, stay with the yeah. Eels for Lukey uh, Dolphins uh, versus Roosters Friday 8pm at HBF Park in Perth yuck uh, 
<laughs> Coach Wayne Bennett has named the same 17 that went, let a 14 point lead slip to the Titans, and Roosters a huge in for the Roosters. Joey Manu is, re- is he back? Remarkably back after only missing three games with that broken hand. Uh, that is the only change to the side that hung on to beat Manly in a thriller round 21. OG Michael Jennings, he got suspended. He fucking game. played outstanding. He played good. Defensively, he was on. And that's why I said they missed that defensive like sort of presence. No one got around him, man. Mm. He was really good. Well, Jason Saab didn't get around him, got him in the chin, so he's suspended for two weeks. Yeah, Sabi. For that hit on Sabi. <laughs> um, the Dolphins are three dollar eighty underdogs. The Roosters yeah. are a dollar twenty seven. The travel doesn't matter, so chill, like there's no chill, home chill field flex, advantage. Chill, chill flex. F- flex minus yeah, eleven and a half. I yeah, think so too. I think they'll. Yeah, I think um, the Dolphins are hard. They're very, they're hard, but I think they just miss Marshall King. That just that little deception around the ruck, I and agree. like you put, yeah, and then it takes sort of Max Plath out of it, and it's just the depth, and you got to put another young kid in there. That That's can't underrated. Play many minutes. It's very underrated. Yeah. How good Max Plath was going through. Yeah, the was Max very was really good. Like he uh, now he's got to get in hooker every time. He's never getting at first receiver, so he's a bit of a ball player. He loves those tough runs, yep. which you need. Um, they got off to a good start last week. Fucking disappointing that loss. Very that could cost them a top eight position. And I feel like the Roosters, they're looking for Roosters a sort of, like, Fuck it, They're looking for a on. performance. They're, they're looking for like 80-minute performance. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm on the Roosters on this one, mate. Minus 11 and a half. Uh, the Titans versus the Broncos, Saturday, 3 p.m. at Seabus Super Stadium. So Damn. Desi has stuck with the same team from round 21, but Alejandro AJ Brimson is lurking in the reserves. He looks like he's close to come back yeah. again. So he's had those niggling Titans. injuries. Titans. Uh, Broncos, Corey Oates comes in on the wing for Selwyn Cobbo. Whilst in the forwards, your man, Brendan Piacorda, is back after Ooh. missing last week. So Kobe Hetherington goes to the bench. Um, the Titans are $2.35 underdogs at home. Brisbane are $1.60 favourites. The line is four and a half. <sighs> Fuck. Titans, can they can they get this? Are they on equal points? Yep. <sighs> I'm going to go to the Broncos. I think they just... A little bit, little bit too too much class. You wanted to say of, Titans, didn't you? Want to do Titans? Yeah, I'll take Titans for you. Take then. the Titans. Yeah, I'm going to go the Broncos. All I right. just think they have fucking got to show some sort of resolve and just, you know, just some fucking balls and put an 80 minute completion. I think loser complete, in this game is complete. eliminated too. Yes, yeah, it's going to be big. I game. just think Broncos are just. Surely they've got something. Huge week. That's Come what on. scares me. I've gone the consistency of the Broncos. I think they've been more consistent, but I'm worried about the, the turbulent week the Broncos I'm have worried, had. Yeah. And I'm worried about them coming out and just blasting. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I bet that game with no confidence. Um, all right, this one is the Melbourne Storm versus the Dragons. I'm probably a little bit more confident in this game. Saturday, 5.30 p.m. at Amy Park. Uh, the money man, Cam Munster, moves back into the starting side after returning from injury last week via the bench. Therefore, Tyron Wishart is the, uh, the player that makes way as the Mr. Fix-It on the bench. Okay. And Sue Falongo, he goes to 18th man. Um, for the Dragons, Tyro Slane is back after missing last week playing New South Wales Cup. Uh, he took Matt Fiengai's job, uh, but he was sidelined after the head knock on Dane Laurie. Toby Couchman's uh, ban for a crusher tackle brings in his brother Ryan. And Mudders Laurie of Blake Variety is also being added to the interchange. Okay. Um, the Storm have got a fairly significant line to beat in this game, and it is 19 and a half. Storm, down easy. To, storm by 20 plus. Stand him, Amy. Yep. It's hard. Down there, it's fucking freezing. Money's going to be back. He's got one game under him. They look good, man. So Missile they told, look good. Missile told me about this crazy stuff. The Since round nine, the Dragons have gone win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So they lost. Oh, they might win. And whenever they lose, they lose in dramatic fashion. And then they fucking really grind so, that next week. And eh? then during that time, w- granted no origin players, they've beat the Roosters. No, sorry, the Panthers. Mm. And they've beat another good team during that period as well. The Broncos. When That's all right. the players were in, right. like they've come up with pretty weird wins. Weird wins. I'm going to go this, Dragons 19 one. and a half start. Not this one. I think it's going to be. got these boys up. I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people. It'll be close. It'll be close. All right. All right. So uh, I'm 650. Yeah, only, if, if, it, if it was a win, win yep. or Jubilee, I'll be nearly back in St. George, but not, not down there. Even after the, what they burnt you last week against the Panthers down there, yeah, win. Fuck. <laughs> that's, what, that's what got me. <laughs> uh, Sharks versus Rabbitohs, Saturday, 7.35 p- Start Sharks. that again. Sharks versus Rabbitohs, Saturday, 7.35 p.m., Points Bet Stadium. Will Kennedy's back uh, in the number one jersey. But huge loss, in my opinion. Ronaldo Mulatalo out. Sam yeah. Stone Street will play on the wing. Royce Hunt returns after missing last week. Uh, he's a big in. He comes in for prop Tom Hazleton, who's missing – uh, with a foot injury, Jack Williams returns from a wrist injury. As for the Rabbitohs, huge in. Skipper Cam Murray is back. 
from his two game two game ban from Origin. So Talis Duncan goes to the bench. Fletcher Myers makes his NRL debut on the wing in place of Alex Johnson Achilles out for the season. Fuck, how long is Trill out for? Uh, he done his fucking Liz Frank, I think. I think like, it was his calf. I thought it was Liz Frank. Didn't we talk so about that? So I thought, yeah, but someone told me he's done his calf. Oh, maybe the calf as well? Yeah, fuck. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, just, I mean, I would have been back in South last three weeks if they had Trell Mitt and Cam Murray. That's just think, been really bad time. Do you think Cam him. can uh, add enough? Not as, he, I mean, he's going to work, he's going to do Cam Murray things, right? Yeah, he's yeah. just going to fucking be an animal through the middle, do all these tackles, do everything like that. But it's like, you just, you need that. That added little bit of a flair and that just that Midas touch on the edge. AJ's not playing. Achilles, you know, you're gonna miss a lot of that. Yeah. Those tries where they score that fan shape, that's because of that's because of fucking Cam Murray's ball playing. Cody Walker, Trell, AJ. Yeah. You I'm know, gonna go so. South plus eleven and a half though. I'm not confident in in uh Cranola beating them. Yeah, I think Cranola will get him. Yeah. You pump him? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're against each other the whole way. That's way. good. How yeah. good. Uh, Penrith versus Newcastle. Uh, this is at Blue Pet Stadium. Uh, the loss of enforcer James Fish Harris to a groin injury brings in Lindsay Smith. Not a bad replacement. Eisenhuth on the bench. Dylan Edwards still out. Dane Laurie still out. So therefore, Isaiah Yongi is set to make his NRL debut at fullback. Halfback Jackson Hastings has been dropped with Phoenix Crossland taking over in the number seven. Jaden Braley at hooker. The absence of Braden Best brings Dylan Lucas again into the centres. Adam Elliott off the bench into the uh, back row. Jack Cogger is the new man on the bench. This is one team that we haven't talked about that's been chaotic all year. They're, the Knights are lucky because Jackson Hastings looks like he's going over back to Super League, to Leeds. All the shit at the Knights – has been it's under the radar. Under the radar because of the Tigers, Parramatta. They can thank the Tigers. South Broncos. South Broncos. They were in the top eight last year, Knights. Yeah, yeah and travelling. And, and, they and won their first semi, didn't they, against Canberra? They did. They got the second round of the semis. They did. Yeah, they did. Talked their did. shit and then pff, here's what it is, man. They haven't been able to fix the, the spine. That's been the biggest issue, right? And uh, so I'm surprised more – I think the reason me people aren't talking about it is because there's been so much other shit Yeah, elsewhere. because all these guys that were expect, expected to be in the top eight and really fighting for like top four positions, yeah. they're not. Yeah. And Newcastle's sitting at what, like 13th or something, 14th? Yeah. And and, and oh, no, I think they'll be about 10th. 10th, 11th, 12th. But, and, but a lot, probably a lot of 11th. So a lot of people would have expected uh, Knights on the fringe anyway, yeah. whereas like the Broncos, higher. The yeah. Warriors, higher. Yeah. Um, and that's probably the only reason Rabbitohs, why. Rabbitohs, higher. It's the only Eels, reason why they're higher. sitting at 11th. Yeah. So if those guys had the, the years that they, was, that, that they thought they were going to have, like they, had last they would have been sitting at 14th. Yeah. Anyway, Panthers by, by a minute. Easy. <laughs> I think we can agree upon that one. Uh, the line is 18 and a half. I think Penrith cover that. They looked impressive last week. And Nathan, Jesus. Nathan, Nathan like, clears in another strategy. He looks like he's getting angry. Uh, Bulldogs versus Raiders Sunday. Ooh, how PM. about those Bulldogs? Two big ins. The skipper's back. Stephen Critterkrighton back after missing round 21 with nerve and uh, a little bit of nerve damage yeah. um, to his neck. Addo Carr is also yeah, back. The Fox is back. Uh, the back line reshuffle sees Kraz return to the wing. And unfortunately, Blake Wilson and Scouton, who have been really good when filling in, mm. uh, they make way. As for the Raiders, Ricky Stewart goes with the same 17 that got the job, job done against the Rabbitohs. Um, test prop, Josh, Josh Papali'i will play his three. 300 games. Well done, big boy. Hopefully it's a fucking terrible game for you. <laughs> um, but you play good. <laughs> yeah. uh, this game sold out. Been sold out for two weeks, wow. two or three weeks. Wow. Building an extra stand up the other end. Yep. The amount of tickets that I've been asked to get. How many ridiculous. numbers can they get in there right now? They'll get 20. 20. This is like you will, this is no standing room. You yeah. will see fucking Belmore at its peak. And I just hope the boys rise to that occasion. I can't wait to get there, mate. Take my little boy to his first game too. I'm back. Oh, awesome. Fuck, yeah. how good's that? Yeah. Mate, that's unreal. Uh, I'm going to take you? him to. Uh, Surely you'll get some seats for that. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so brother, brother's coming down. Brother's coming down. Oh, nice. uh, big, Les. big Les and his two boys. Um, That's so cool. Oh, I'm backing you. I'm going bulldog. Yeah, well. and, uh, We're going opposite on this. Yeah, how good! Like Aaron Warburton goes. Oh, I'll, give, I'll get the jersey boys some jerseys. They can come in the sheds and That's all that mad. sort of stuff. And I'm like, That's fucking awesome. First game there, so it'll be um, proud moment. You know what I mean? Like, it's uh, it'll be it'll be good, man. But I think our boys will. It'll, I think we. We're, that crowd will get us home, man. Yeah. There'll be about fucking five Canberra fans there. Do you know what I mean? Like you just they're just gonna sell it. Let's all that whole hill is packed. 
all this is this is going to be outstanding. I hope our, our boys can stand up and just play some really good football. So I'm really pumped to get there, man. Yeah, awesome. It'll be uh, it'll be unreal. Going to, oh, on Saturday, you know, Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is here. Yeah. So obviously Archie loves fucking Hot Wheels. Yeah, yeah. The four the the monster trucks. Yeah. So Mick Omar, a really good friend of mine. Does all the Sony stuff like that, like Disney on ice. So I got like sweet tickets, fucking eight tickets, Lazy's two boys and everything. Oh, mate, be fucking Fuck, hectic. you got a mad week. I've got a great weekend, weekend coming up. Yeah, really good weekend. All right, so do I. I've got a big weekend coming up. Apologies, I haven't done my levels bets friends special for this week. Keep an eye on it. I'm going to do a Sunday game. I'm going to do all that tomorrow. Apologies for my anytime try scorers as well. Been a very chaotic week. I've got that golf day that I was telling you about. I've been pushing for that and trying to get it going. So I'm going to address all of that tomorrow. I have the try scorers from Friday onwards with my Levels uh, bets friend special with my tips for the tab uh, on that as well. So I'll have that all done by you, done for you to buy tomorrow. Uh, as always, footy. we want everyone to be playing safe during the footy season. So please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with. If you need free and confidential support, call one 858 And Mace, enjoy your weekend, Luke. Enjoy your weekend, and see you on Monday.